everybody. I welcome you all to this meeting of the Kadinya Shire Council and now declare the meeting open. Please note that this meeting is being held virtually and webcast live over the internet on Council's website. We will commence the meeting with the following prayer. Almighty God, we humbly request that you bestow your blessings upon this Council. Direct and prosper our deliberations to the advancement of your glory and to the betterment of the peoples of Gdynia Shire. Amen. The Kidinia Shire Council respect, respectfully acknowledges that we are on the traditional land of the Bunurong and Wurundjeri people and pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Uh, currently we have no we have received no apologies for this evening. Uh, minutes of previous meeting. Can I please have a motion to adopt the minutes of the previous meeting as listed? Uh, moved by Councillor Ray Brown and seconder uh, Councillor Carol Ryan. Um, all those in favour? I declare that carried. Uh, thank you, councillors. Declarations of interest. Um, councillors, uh, do I have any declarations of interest? Tonight's meeting. Um, Please, Councillor Ross, yes. I've already declared it to the General Manager of Governance, uh, Doug Evans, on the item concerning me. Thank you. All right, for the item uh, 6.2.5. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ross. Any other, any other declarations of interest? There are, appears to be none. Thank you, Councillors. Um, <clears throat> ordinary business. Uh, the Council conducts its meetings according to a consent agenda. Councillors have advised of the matters for consideration this evening that they wish to discuss or debate. The remaining items will be adopted without discussion. The items withdrawn for tonight's proceedings are as follows. Item 6.1.1, Planning Scheme Amendment C257, Beakersfield Development Plan Overlay 25, withdrawn by Councillor Brett Owen. Councillor Owen? Thank you, Mayor. I move the following. The Council 1 seek the authorisation of the Minister for Planning under Section 8A subsection 2 of the Planning Environment Act 1987 to prepare Amendment C257 to the Cardinia Planning Scheme, generally in accordance with Attachment 1, and 2 give notice of Amendment C257 to the Cardinia Planning Scheme under Section 19 of the Planning Environment Act 1987 subject to receiving the authorisation of the Minister for Planning under Part 1. I move so. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Can I have a seconder, please? Um, Councillor Michael Schilling. Uh, Councillor Owen, I'll go back to you to uh, speak to this item first. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Schilling. So just reading from the report, the Beaconsfield Structure Plan was adopted by Council in December 2013 and was later implemented as an incorporated document in the Cardinia Planning Scheme via Amendment C198 in May 2016. So this part of the Beaconsfield Structure Plan uh, that we're talking about tonight is the Woodland Grove Precinct, um, which is basically the west side of Wood Street, near the railway station and, and abutting the Cardinia Creek. Amendment 2, C257 proposes to implement the planning outcome sought by the Beacons of Structure Plan for a more targeted statutory planning tool, being a DPO. The DPO will provide direction on issues such as protection of important vegetation, habitats, drainage and other infrastructure, uh, traffic movement and vehicle access, pedestrian links, public open space and landscaping, lot sizes, building setbacks, front fence heights and treatments, and integration of the de development site with the future Cardinia Creek parklands. The amendment also proposes to change the status of the Beaconsfield Structure Plan from the incorporated document to a background document. This approach aligns with the advice received from Dalwop, the, the State Department, uh, will improve policy control and the built form and subdivision outcomes for the Beaconsfield Town Centre. So it is recommended that Council resolves to seek authorisation from the Minister for Planning to prepare and exhibit uh, this C257. So I think it is really important step to 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 seek authorization to do this. 
Um, this area of Beaconsfield is, is a really great location, close to public transport, close to the commercial uh, precinct, but also it's got some really got you know, natural you know, resources, um, um, uh, obviously abutting, abutting the creek. And there is so much potential to really activate the Cardinier Creek, activate pedestrian links between the station, Beaconsfield Town Centre, and also um, along Cardinier Creek, um, uh, you know, where there's going to be quite extensive uh, future parklands on the, on the edge of Casey. So um, I this is obviously the first step where we go to exhibition. We strongly engage with obviously the landholders there um, and the community. So uh, I move so, and I'm really looking forward to it because it's this has got so much potential for Beaconsfield and really somewhat improve the amenity of this area of Beaconsfield. Obviously there's you know, a large parcel of, of vacant land um, there is so much potential. So I'm really excited about moving this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. I'll, I'll go to Councillor Schilling to uh, speak to this item next. Thank you, Merrick. I, I don't have much to say other than, Councillor Owen, thank you for bringing this to the Council table. You've been a long-term supporter of Beaconsfield and I know your passion towards um, local residents and making sure that development happens um, in a way that's sustainable and that will benefit um, all of the residents. Uh, I think the, um, this um, aspect of the structure plan just will make it more workable and it will make it stronger as well. And I'm in support of this going to the planning minister, seeking approval to go on to the next stages. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Schilling. Uh, do I have any other councillors that would like to speak to this item? Um, there being none, I'll go back to Councillor Brett Owen to summarise. Uh, thank you, Councillor Schilling. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just uh, I think uh, this is a positive step for this development of, of this area of Beaconsfield. Um, so it's going out to exhibition and we welcome uh, people's uh, feedback. Thanks very much. Uh, councillors, I'll now put this to a vote. All those in favour? I declare the item carried. Thank you, councillors. <clears throat> Moving along to item 6.1.2, use of the land for a restricted place of assembly, alterations and additions to the existing buildings and alteration to access to a road in the ro in a road zone category one at no 905 Kuirup Road, Pakenham. Uh, withdrawn by Councillor Schilling. Councillor Schilling, you have uh, proposed an alternate motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Sorry, that is correct, I, I have. Um, I'm proposing that we grant council application T190275 uh, with the extensive conditions highlighted, which council has received earlier today, including a limited permit uh, for a period of two years on the property. Hmm. Thank you, Councillor Schling. Um, can I have a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Letitia Wilmer. Um, Back to you, Councillor Schilling, uh, to speak to this item first. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so this is a, an application uh, for a place of a place of um, assembly, place of worship at 905 Kuirup Road um, in Pakenham. So council officers originally had uh, recommended for a refusal um, to this permit, and that was based um, upon a number of factors, one of them being um, two objections from, um, one of them being from South East Water, and it was important to note when reading those objections that they really were signifying uh, future development and how by this um, by granting this application how we're really um, hampering potentially hampering future development on some key infrastructure projects um, but the key words which were used throughout these um, throughout the report was potential and future so with those that sort of theme running through it um, I decided to move this alternate because I believe that the, uh, the group would, should be able to stay within this facility. Um, mind you, this is already a, a, a facility that's already built. It's a house. Um, it already has the capacity to do what they're asking to do. Um, and it's actually already being used in the form of a community kitchen. So I see there's no harm in allowing a permit for a period of two years to allow these gatherings to happen 26 times a year, providing there's a series of conditions met. And one of them being that there has to be some type of gravel car park to be able to um, cater the needs, um, obviously, on those, on those, meeting, on those meeting dates. 
Um, in terms of some of the objections, um, there's a bit of a concern around the treatment buffer zone from southeast water. Um, there's a requirement for there to be a 770 metre buffer, um, and there's currently a 700 metre buffer. So we're not talking uh, large amounts, um, large amounts of room here. So um, the people, the applicants, are very aware that this isn't a site that they um, are able to stay in long term because of all the development, and they're aware that they need to look for another property. Um, and by having this two years permit to be able to just continue meeting and to be able to continue the work until another site is found would be of great benefit. So I'm hoping that councillors um, will support um, this tonight alternate recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Schilling. Um, I'll go to Councillor Wilmot to speak next to this item. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I'm happy to support Councillor Schilling in this alternative motion, and I congratulate him on working with the applicant and the um, planning officers um, to find this compromise here. Um, the applicants are well aware, as Councillor Schilling just said, that this long term isn't going to be a suitable place for them. Um, but they need some time to be able to still continue with what they do, and they do a lot of really good work in our communities, um, and particularly in times of crisis where people are vulnerable. So I think it's a really good outcome that we're able to give them the option to continue where they are, to meet 26 times a year, but it gives them that breathing space to be able to find a more suitable location. And that's, you know, who knows how long that's going to take with this pandemic at the moment. Um, a, they can't meet. Um, but B, it makes finding a, a different location difficult. And this could continue for quite a while yet, we don't know. Um, so it, two years period, um, as Councillor Schilling said, um, there's a lot of ifs, buts and maybes about um, some of this uh, potential development with Melbourne water, et cetera. Um, and you can't live your life on ifs, buts and maybes. Um, so to give them two years to find another property, I think is a very good compromise. I don't think that um, there could be any harm come out of this. Um, so I'm happy to support Councillor Schilling in this motion. Thank you, Councillor Wilmot. Um, would any other councillors like to speak to this item? Uh, Councillor Carol Ryan, first. Thank you to you, Mayor. I'm in support too with Councillor Schilling and um, and as Councillor Wilmot brought up a, a very valid point as well, that they do do a lot of uh, great work within the community and um, it would disrupt what um, effect they have on the community if they weren't continually working. So the alternate motion over uh, giving them the, the two years to find somewhere else, um, I'm all in agreement with that. So I've got nothing else to add to that, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Uh, Councillor Ross, next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I concur with my fellow councillors so far that uh, I will support this alternate motion. Uh, this group is, is an amazing group, the, the group in Pakenham and Officer. Uh, they're outstanding local groups that add so much to our local community. I've spent whole weekends with this group where I've seen them hand out free meals, hand out free clothing, hand out free water at train stations when it's extremely hot. They run local sporting events which have free activities for everybody and food over a whole weekend and their national events, and they, they bring tens of thousands of people they offer to the community. Um, they have an outstanding reputation in our community. I have no doubt they will comply with the restrictions, and, and I think um, it's totally fair that they, they would get the opportunity to open their establishment there uh, on a limited basis for a couple of years for 26 meetings a year. Uh, this is allowable use of this, this piece of land in the zoning that it's in, and I'll be supporting it. So anyway, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, any other councillors would like to speak with this item? Uh, Councillor Moore. Uh, well, thank you, Mayor, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, this is a very interesting um, uh, planning application. I, I just want to make note to people that it's a, it's, a, it's a planning application, this, and it's not about what people do in the community, even though I respect what they do, and they do a fantastic job for our, for our um, people with the supplying of food and whatever out of this particular um, venue. But I, I'm just saying that, it's a, that we are looking at a planning 
um, application here, and um, and we've got to look at what the planning application um, divulges. And at first, I I was against this um, to um, to go with the council officers and go with um, what I thought was correct with the with the objectives. But you know what? I think with the with the two year um, ceiling on that from introduced by Councillor Schilling, with, with the conditions, and there's many conditions to this, it's not, this is not over the line at the moment, this is not very simple, so it's still got a bit, bit of a way to go yet. And I think with the two year um, uh, parameter around the, around the planning application, I, I can only hope they get this built within this pandemic we've got at the moment, because we've got, um, of course, issues with the building industry as well, with, with getting things built as well and changes. But um, I'm all for this and I'm going to um, support uh, this alternative motion um, at this time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Um, any other councillors would like to speak to this item? Um, there being none, I'll go back to Councillor Schilling to summarise. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to um, Councillor Wilmot, Ryan, Ross, and Moore uh, for speaking in support in support of this. Um, in terms of yeah, in terms of this as as an application. Um, I was advised today that the existing building would be sufficient to um, have the number of people required um, for a service at 26 times a year. So, look, I'm, I'm satisfied that it will be um, managed well, and hopefully, this two years does give um, this group enough time to find uh, alternate arrangements, and at the same time, will allow that development from southeast water in particular, um, and the time comes for them to um, potentially extend their operations in the area as well. Thank you. Uh, councillors, I will now put this to a vote. All those in favour? I declare that carried. Thank you. Moving along to item 6.1.4, alterations and additions to existing dwelling and outbuilding. 197 Quamby Road, Beaconsfield Upper. Withdrawn by Councillor Brett Owen. Councillor Owen, you have a proposed motion. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I'll move that and I'll turn it over. Motion, I move the following, that planning permit application for T200167 for the alterations and additions to an existing dwelling and outbuilding at lot 1 LP 83659 197 Quamby Road, Beaconsfield Upper 3808 be refused and a refusal to grant a permit be issued on the following grounds. The scale, size and the height of the development are contrary to the purpose of the Green Wedge A zone as they do not protect, conserve and enhance, enhance the character of the rural and scenic non-urban landscape. The setbacks and design of the development are contrary to the purpose of the Green Wedge A zone as they do not recognise and protect the amenity of the existing rural living area. The bulk and footprint of the development does not achieve the environmental objectives of Schedule 1 of the Environmental Significance Overlay to enhance Indigenous vegetation and maintain vegetation as predominant features of the landscape. The development is not in accordance with Clause 11.01-1 and 12.05-2S and 21.02-2 as it does not recognise recognise and protect the diverse landscape of the surrounding area. Development is not in accordance with clauses 15.01-2S, 15.01-5S and 15.01-6S and 21.06-1 as it does not respond to local content of the rural character of the surrounding area. And the development is not in accordance with clauses 21.03-3 or 21.07-5, as it does not maintain and enhance the hilltop bushland character or complement the natural environment of the area. And finally, the development is contrary to the clause 65.01, as it does not represent the orderly planning of the area and will have an adverse impact on the amenity of the neighbouring land. I move so. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Uh, Councillor Wilmot, um, I'll go back to you, Councillor Owen, to speak to this item first. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Wilmot. Thank you for your patience as I read that out. That was quite long, so I, I apologise. I, I read each item out, but uh, I thought it was really important. So just reading from the report, the subject site is legally described uh, as 
197, Quambia Road, Beaconsfield Upper, or Upper Beaconsfield, as some people say. The rectangular-shaped allotment is located on the western side of Quambia Road and has an area of approximately 1,143 square metres. The site has been improved by a single-storey dwelling, which is located towards the rear of the site, with a setback of approximately 25 metres from the street um, and minimum side setbacks of approximately three metres. The main correct characteristics of the surrounding area, and this is important, in, a, in a approximately 3.5 hectare regular shape allotment is uh, located to the north east of the site, known as 201 Quambi Road, also, Quambie Road is located on the south side of the site and opposing are large allotments between approximately 3.5 hectares to 8.3 hectares. To the west of the site is approximately a 0.5 hectare rectangular shape allotment known as 189 Quambie Road, which contains a double storey dwelling. The site forms part of the area of land zone green wedge A. So the proposal is for alterations and additions to the existing dwelling and outbuilding, although very little of the existing dwelling will remain. The existing roof and majority of walls and openings of the dwelling will be removed, as will the deck on the southern side of the building. The dwelling, which currently consists of three bedrooms, kitchen and living dining areas across a single level, will be transformed into a double storey dwelling containing living areas at the ground floor level and four bedrooms at the first floor level. A new double garage and loft will be constructed on the east of the dwelling. Overall, the dwelling will have a maximum height of 12.325 metres. This is the proposal. Uh, the expanded shed loft will have a maximum height of 7.4 metres and the new garage loft have a height of 8.135 metres. So there is a number of planning uh, control triggers, and they are Green Wedge A, uh, that being environmental significance overlay, and also a bush fire management overlay. So they are the triggers for a permit. This uh, application was advertised, and we received objections from 10 persons or 10 groups or households, and those uh, objections, you know, it's fair to say was very detailed. And there was also following follow-up follow sort of objections as well um, uh, to the first round of objections. So as councillors, you know, I've read them. Um, they are very detailed. I um, I know we're under restrictions at the moment, but I was able to 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 ride my bike actually um, up there and and visit the site last week, as it's within five k's of my um, my my premises, and and I was exercising. So I did did go and check out this site and had a really good, um, good sort of appreciation of the environment and the area. So that's why, obviously, I, I read out a long list of reasons for refusals because I'm really concerned that this is so out of touch with the existing neighbourhood character of that area. Um, the height of 12 metres is, is so out of character. Um, I've got concerns about the sewerage, um, whether the sewerage can be contained on the site with such with this uh, development. Um, there's other concerns about the impact on other properties. There's heritage properties up there with heritage significance overlays, etc. And I've got real concerns that this will have adverse impacts on on the the vicinity of, of this area. Um, in relation to the report, the officers are recommending approval with conditions. But I've got concerns um, that if we do approve this, uh, the, the neighbours in the area won't have any appeal rights, as in uh, if, if, they, if the final outcome is negotiated by, by planners to finalise the plans, you know, reduce heights, et cetera, their right to, to appeal you know, what, you know, any amended plans is not there. And you know, I've got real concerns about that um that th there is no appeal rights from from objectors if it goes to the next stage where things are negotiated um and plans are adjusted etc uh, that removes uh, other people's rights so i think obviously my reasons for refusal is quite wordy um but th i think they are legitimate reasons for refusal and uh, taking account of obviously the issues raised um and concerns raised by the objectors i personally think they are very legitimate concerns 
and and that's why I'm moving this this refusal. So I welcome other councillors' uh, comments, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Wilmer, uh, your turn to speak next, please. Thank you, Mayor. And yes, I support Councillor Owen in his um, alternative motion to refuse this application. And I share a lot of the concerns that he's raised in his alternative motion. Um, this application, as Councillor Owen said, received 10 objectors and um, a number of those objectors have been in touch with councillors on numerous occasions um, by phone and via email. And the depth and the um, knowledge and um, expertise that comes in, across in their objections is quite amazing. And I thank them for taking the time to um, object in this way and to, and the fact that there's 10 of it, 10 objections means that it has come to council for a decision. Without those 10 objections, it would have been um, a decision of the council officers whether or not to approve it. Um, so it is worth taking that time and these people have taken a lot of time and put a lot of thought and a lot of consideration into it, and I thank them for that. Um, this building, as Councillor Owens, the proposal originally is that it's going to be 12.325 metres high. That's the height of a three or four storey building, and they're on the high side. So they've got neighbours that are um, on the slope, downward slope um, below this. So to say that um, you're going to be looking out your windows and seeing this huge building that is way too high for other buildings in this area. The, the next highest building in this area is only 7.3 metres. So this is nearly two times as high. Um, the envelope that this this um, development is going to take up currently, it's um, 800 and the footprint for the building is 283 square metres. With this development, it's going to be 468 square metres. Again, that's that's a huge increase in the, the footprint and it'll be 41% of the total land package will be taken up with buildings. Again, that's not heard of in a rural environment. And I get that this is a bit of an anomaly, this block, being that it's only around about a quarter of an acre and um, all the neighbouring blocks are, are much, much bigger. Um, I also have concerns on the setbacks, particularly the side setbacks for this. Um, which are only um, three metres. So the building will be three metres from the side setbacks. That's that's 2.5 less than what the standard setbacks are. And the report states that it's okay for this because the neighbouring properties have got ample setbacks to accommodate for that. Um, I, don't, I don't think that that's a reasonable explanation. Everybody should have to have their own setbacks and meet those standards within their own perimeter of their um, allotment. Um, this, yeah, as Councillor um, Owen has said, it doesn't stick with the character. It doesn't sit within the guidelines stated within the Upper Beaconsfield strategy, um, particularly around the height of the building. The strategy clearly states that it should be uh, 7.5 metres is the highest the building should be. So for all those reasons and the ones that Councillor Owen has outlined in his alternative motion, I'm happy to support the refusal of this application. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Wilmer. Um, I'd just like to state for myself that um, I will be supporting my Rangers Ward colleagues in this item and um, and appreciate the, the hard work that you've both put into this, especially Councillor Owen in um, drafting this alternative motion. You've put a lot of work into it and I've spoken to some of these residents that have been objecting as well. Um, and they were really appreciative of the time that both yourself and uh, Councillor Wilmot had, had given to them. So I'm very happy to support your, your motion here. Um, councillors, do I have any other councillors that would like to speak to this item? Um, they're being done. I'll go back to um, Councillor Brett Owen to, um, to summarise on this item. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Letitia Wilmot. Just, uh, I just quickly want to summarise the reasons why uh, I'm proposing to refuse this uh, permit. Um, it does not protect, conserve and enhance the character of the rural and scenic non-urban landscape. The setbacks and design of the development are contrary to the green, sorry, to the purpose of the Green Wedge A zone as they do not recognise and protect the amenity of the existing rural living area. And that's really obvious, you know, when you go up there and you look at the abutting properties, it is so not in line with, with the, the character of the area. 
Uh, also, the bulk and footprint of the development does not achieve the environmental objectives. Um, also, it does not recognise and protect the diverse landscape of the surrounding area, and it does not respond to local context, context um, or the rural character of the surrounding area. And I note Councillor Wilmot's comments about the strategy. Um, it does not maintain the enhance uh, and enhance. It does not maintain and enhance the hilltop bushland character, or complement the natural environment of the area. And finally, it does not represent the orderly planning of the area and will have an adverse impact on the amenity of the neighbouring land. And in my opinion, it will. It will have a severe adverse impact on other neighbours, particularly um, the one on the lower, well, probably both sides, to be honest, and also across the road. It will have adverse impacts on, on these abutting residents. And so, it is on you know these grounds uh, on move to refuse this application. Thank you, Mayor. Mm. Um, councillors, we'll now put this to a vote. Uh, all those in favour? I declare that item carried. Thank you, councillors. Um, moving along to item 6.1.5, two lot subdivision at lot AA PS 814723U. Cotswold Crescent officer. Uh, withdrawn by Councillor Brett Owen. Thank you, Mayor. I move the following. The Council issue a notice of decision to refuse to grant planning permit T200214 or lot or two lot subdivision at Cotswold Crescent Officer, Victoria 3809, on the following grounds. One, the proposal is contrary to the strategies of clause 15.03-1S heritage conservation as it does not ensure an appropriate setting and context for the heritage place is maintained or enhanced and does not support the adaptive reuse of the heritage buildings. Two, the proposal is contrary to the purpose and design guidelines of clause 43.01 heritage overlay as the subdivision does not conserve and enhance the significance of the heritage place and will adversely affect the significance of the heritage place. Three, the proposal is contrary to the planning and design guidelines for image and character, Table 5 CA3 in Officer Precinct Structure Plan and the subdivision does not A, integrate heritage sites with adjacent subdivision design and B, ensure view lines to the front of the heritage buildings from existing roads is maintained. And move so. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, can I have a seconder, please, for this item? Uh, Councillor Wilmot. Um, Councillor Owen, would you like to speak to this item? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think we all know the site in question. The James Hicks Pottery site covered is covered by the heritage overlay, contains the brick kiln, chimney, and clay pit. These interrelated heritage elements have historical significance for their association with the Hicks family and the origins and development of the important district brick, pipe and pottery industries dating back to the 1880s. Um, so this application is trying to further subdivide the land in this area, you know, create a two lot subdivision, basically carving off most of the land and leaving just the kiln. It's so disappointing that this application is before us tonight. Um, we know this is probably, you know, only, you know, uh, um, some of the last remaining history sites in, in Officer, and it is so important that we see this kiln saved, you know, restored and celebrated. But this applicant is further, you know, dwindling the land around it, which will, in my opinion, make it almost impossible to achieve that ultimate goal of you know, protecting, preserving and celebrating. Um, so obviously the officers are recommending refusal uh, because of those reasons. I support that. Uh, I've been speaking to the Officer and District Community Association. They, sh they support Council's um, stance on this. Um, I invite the applicant to recommence those conversations with council so we can come up with a an appropriate way to to save these heritage this heritage site in officer let's come back to the table and look at options 
And, you know, I think the community is wanting that. It's not just the district association and council. I think the general community wants to see that preserved and celebrated. So I invite the applicant to do that. So for the following reasons listed in the report, I'll, I'll be supporting this refusal. Thank you, Mayor. Mm. Thank you, Thank Councillor you. Owen. I'll now go to the seconder um, to speak to this item. Uh, Councillor Wilmot. Thank you, Mayor. Sorry about that little okay. technical glitch. Um, yes, I'm happy to support um, this uh, recommendation as well. This is one of the last um, heritage sites within Officer, and it's incredibly important to save our heritage sites. Once they're gone, they're gone. You can't rebuild a heritage site. You, can, you might build something similar, but it doesn't have the history and it doesn't have the feel. This is important to the community um, and not just the residents that have been there for a long time. This is important to a lot of the new residents that are coming here. They might not necessarily know the full history, but they know that it's a special place. And over the time that they live there, I'm sure they'll get to know the history. And it's important to show our children that we care about our history. So I'll be supporting this to refuse this application because it it's it would be wrong. To carve up this allotment would absolutely seal the fate for this building and that would be a real tragedy. So um, I'm, I'm happy to refuse this, this application. And as Councillor Owen said, I support his motion that the, that the um, developer come back to Council and start talking to us again. It is only a couple of months ago that, that they had a proposal to transfer this into um, council ownership and they withdrew that proposal. So come back to the table, talk to us, see what can be done. This is an important site and it would be um, a great shame to lose this wonderful asset for not just the officer community but the whole of the Kajinya Shire community. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilmot. Um, are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? Uh, Councillor Jody Owen. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I concur with the other two councillors. I also wish to note that when this site was first taken over by the developer, it was promised that this site would be looked after. And in that time, we saw a horrible storm go through, take the roof off, and then we've seen demolition by neglect through this site. Um, I concur that this is a historical site that is important to local residents. After the storms, residents were extremely upset that it um, was perceived that council was doing nothing to protect this site. So I will be supporting this and also supporting the refusal of the plan. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, would any other councillors like to speak to this item? Um, uh, there being none, I'll go back to the um, to Councillor Brett Owen uh, to summarise. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you to the other councillors for speaking and your support for this very important heritage site. So, the proposal is a two lot subdivision, one being just over twelve hundred square metres in, uh, in size, and the other being five hundred fourteen square metres in size. And the five hundred fourteen is for killed only. Um, so, I, as I said before. Let's let's speak to the applicant. Let's engage with the applicant to see what are the uh, the opportunities for the site. I know there's been pre previous permits issued for a cafe, um, restaurant. Let's let's further progress those. But if we allow this to occur, this will see, see the sealing the end of this this, this very important um, site. So we need to refuse this uh, for this reason. So thank you, councillors. <clears throat> Uh, councillors, I'll now put this to the vote. Um, all those in favour? All those against? I declare that item carried. Thank you, councillors. <clears throat> uh, moving along to item 6.2.1, uh, Officer Sports Club uh, lease, withdrawn by Councillor Brett Owen. Thank you, Mayor. I move the following. Uh, the Council 1 enters an agreement for lease and lease of part of the reserve at 20 Starling Road Officer with the Officer Sports Club on the following terms. Term, nine years, rental $104 per annum, annum. rental increase annual by 3%, maintenance policy, responsibility shared in accordance with Council's maintenance policy, 
and special conditions tenant to construct premises subject to council approval and two advise the objectors to the proposal to lease that the conditions included in the proposed lease and the management of the reserve by a council appointed committee will ensure that their concerns are appropriately addressed i've moved so thank you councillor owen um can i have a seconder please uh councillor Schilling. um i'll go back to you councillor owen to speak to this item first Thank you, Mayor, Just, and thank you, Councillor Shearling. Obviously, a few months ago, we went out to uh, for exhibition of this proposed lease. There was one objection, I believe, uh, and uh, they have been addressed in this lease um, in relation to the, the makeup of the building, you know, ensuring that appropriate materials are used to reduce the, um, uh, the noise coming from this facility, um, also just the design, the layout of access doors, et cetera. Um, so I'm really confident that um, the concerns of this objector or this submitter is, is addressed. This lease is so important. We need to get this signed so the, the community group can build this community space at Officer Rec Reserve. We know the history of it. I think Council is aware of this. And this is you know, basically the final steps to, 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 to approve works to get started. And, and uh, so that is a great thing for the officer community. So, I move so that we uh, approve this uh, lease arrangement. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, Councillor Owen, I mean, it's Councillor Schilling, I'll go to you to speak next. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you, Councillor Owen, for bringing this to the table tonight. This is, a, this is an important item. Um, ever since being on this council uh, for, the past, you know, for the past four years, this has been something that um, we've seen this club advocate for, lobby for, and have done that very successfully. Um, they've presented business cases, they've um, spoken to councils, different levels of government, and it was a, it was a big job, it was a big undertaking, and um, they prevailed in the end, and they were able to secure their funding and um, be able to produce plans for a, um, for a, fantastic, for a fantastic facility. So um, look, this is the next step in the process, and um, I welcome this going, hopefully going through council tonight so we can, um, they can get on, get on with business. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Schilling. Um, would any other councillors like to speak to this item? Um, there being none, I might just put a few words in myself before I hand it back to the mover, Councillor Owen. Um, I think I, I encourage my councillor colleagues to support this item tonight. Um, it is the next step in, in this evolution, and, and these guys um, at Officer Rep Reserve have been needing these upgrades for some time. This will allow them to have this happen, and. They're a great club. It's a great community down there. Um, so I really hope we can all support this and, and help them develop into, um, to meet their full potential for the future. So thank you, councillors. Um, I'll hand it back to Councillor Brett Owen to summarise. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Schilling. Uh, well said by all. Um, this is a long awaited project. Um, I just want to acknowledge the three levels of government um, that are supporting this project you know, through various grant, um, grants, but obviously the federal government, the state, and through council. So I'm really pleased that. And and also, and also uh, the club, the officer sports club and, and members, basically the sporting clubs attached to the reserve, are financially contributing to this project as well. You know, um, and I commend them for that commitment. And this is going to be a great facility for all of officer, not just the sporting clubs involved. This is community space, community room. So. Um, they are going to manage this project in relation to the construction. Uh, they, uh, they, they're going to go out to tender, and that's why this lease was important, so they can, you know, gives them the authority to do that. They've got their planning permit to, to build it. They've got this now, so I'm really excited um, that we'll see this uh, construct, you know, start construction very soon. Thanks very much. Uh, councillors, we'll now put this to the vote. <clears throat> All those in favour? I declare the item carried. Thank you, councillors. <clears throat> um, moving along to item 6.2.3, <clears throat> fire access track, uh, Mackenzie Road, Beakersfield Upper. Um, withdrawn by councillor Brett Owen, um, who I believe has an alternative motion um, for this item. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move the, the following motion. That Council One, the installation of the fire access 
gates at Mackenzie Road and Tower Road not proceed. Two, that the road remain as a road accessible for vehicles. And three, the road be maintained to the minimum standard permissible to allow vehicular access to continue. Uh, thank you, Councillor Owen. Uh, can I have a seconder, please, Councillors? Uh, Councillor Wilmot. Um, back to you, Councillor Owen, to speak to this item. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Wilmot. So my proposed motion, or my motion, is that the installation of the fire access gates at Mackenzie Road and Tower Road not proceed, and basically that the road continue to be uh, uh, able to be used for vehicular access. Just as some background, Council has got a program of um, upgrading or improving fire, extra, fire access tracks and, and basically putting gates on them. Um, this is the only location that I have received negative feedback about that program. The only location. And it's fair to say I have received so many emails on this, um, on this matter concern residents in the immediate vicinity, but also in the wider you know, area of this part of Upper Beaconsfield. Back in, I think, uh, July, I, I got a uh, lot of cor correspondence and uh, I've been speaking with officers and then, then this decision was made uh, by officers. And um, unfortunately, residents weren't able to meet with council one on one and with councillors on site because of the COVID-19 restrictions. And you know, I know that was something they desperately wanted to do, but this decision was made, I think, in, in August, and that really concerned me. So that's why back in the August, at the August council, meet, council meeting last month, I asked that a report come, uh, come before council, and that's this report now. My view is this right section of road is is, is not a fire access track. It is a section of road that has been used by residents in this part of Upper Beaconsfield for a very long time, and I understand over 40 years. So closing it off is, is not acceptable in my opinion. Uh, fire access track, I think that should be kept to the side because I think this road is a road that should be open, maintained by council. I'm asking for it to be open and maintained at the, the minimum requirements permissible to allow for that road to continue to be open. Whether it's a, a 4D or a 4E fire access track, fire access, access track or a 4D, which is uh, one step up from there. I know the report talks about this section, if it's gonna be upgraded, it's gonna be 4C. I've got question marks about that. There is a number of examples around our Shire where roads are in very similar um, condition as this section of Mackenzie Road, and they are open for two-way traffic, et cetera, et cetera. And I think you know, closing it, it will be so wrong. This is, as I said, a road that's been you know, used by residents for over 40 years for access through you know, um, between you know, two roads. And creating two dead-end roads in this environment is not good in my opinion. I know there's been comments about um, you know people wanting to use this as a fire you know escape route. Um, my view is this road should be maintained all the time and and if it needs to be um, upgraded to the minimum standard to allow that to continue you know, that's what I'm asking for. Residents don't want it to be you know majorly upgraded you know that is definitely what they don't want they're happy for the current conditions of the road but if if council's got a statutory role in you know in managing roads you know i'm asking what is the bare minimum to allow that to continue to be open so i welcome other councillors comments on this i appreciate you probably received a lot of correspondence on, on this issue and so i welcome your thoughts and um, ideas thank you mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor Owen. I'll go to the second, uh, Councillor Wilmot, to speak to this item next. Thank you, Mayor. And yes, I, I'm going to support Councillor Owen in his alternative motion tonight. Um, over the recent weeks, we have had quite a lot of correspondence from a lot of different residents. Um, some, some residents have, have emailed and made contact on a number of occasions. Um, and there is a lot of community angst and upset about this proposal. 
is this track's been in use by residents for 40 years. Um, in the report, it, it, it talks about the status of the road and that um, the fire access track had not existed in Conquest, which is our um, software, until 2004. Um, and that it um, was Oh, where is it? Um, yeah, 2004. And the access track was noted to start at, two, at 340 metres north of Split Rock Road and the length suggested it went all the way to Tower Road. In two, December 2006, Council actually created a segment of the section of road from number 30 to Tower Road and adjusted the fire access track segment. So there's been a bit of a chequered history here, but it hasn't been closed off all of that time. In fact, this is a completely new proposal. So residents, although it's been a fire track for apparently since 2004 or 2006, residents have still been able to use it um, and they still wish to be able to use it. So I agree with Councillor Owen that if it's maintained to the bare minimum to make it accessible for those residents, that it should be, that's the way it should continue. There's pre-existing use here and I think it would be wrong of us to take that, that track and close it off so that people can't make use of it in the way they have for the last 40 years. So I'll support Councillor Owen on this alternative motion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor Wilmot. Um, councillors, do I have anyone else that would like to speak to this item? Uh, Councillor Jody Owen. Thank you, Mayor. Um, although it's been used in its current way for 40 years, one resident told me a really interesting fact this afternoon just before briefing. And the actual road has been there since the 1800s. So I will be supporting Councillor Owen in his motion because I think the residents deserve to have this road as it is. Um, it may not be used a lot. It may not be a busy road. It may not be important to some people, but it is definitely important to these residents. And for that reason, I will be supporting Councillor Owen's motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, do I have any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? Uh, councillor Ross. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I believe this road is the road that Councillor Owen and myself have run on during the Tower Hill run. Uh, so we've actually walked it, run it, gone up and down it quite a few times. Uh, I must say, it, 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 it is, uh, a quality of road which is far better than some of them in our shire and I can't see any reason why it wouldn't continue in the same fashion that it has as as some of the councillors pointed out for a long time. There's no need to shut it off the way it is. Uh, it's kept in an okay condition and it serves the purpose that it would be needed. So I'll be supporting Councillor Brett Owen in, in this um, endeavour to leave it open. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mm. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, do I have any other councillors that would like to speak to this item? Um, I might just say a, a quick word. I think it's, this one's a complicated one. It's a, it's a difficult situation. Um, I want to um, you know, thank the officers involved for the work that they've done to put this report together. You know, um, it's been, there's been a lot of work that, that Brett has really put into this, that Councillor Owen has put into this, and, I'll, and I will support him in this motion and appreciate the efforts he's gone to it. But, um, I, I want to also just make mention that you know the council officer's report is you know is accurate in its sense as well. The, the problem is you know one size doesn't necessarily fit all in the circumstances we have across our unique shire, and I think this is one of those places where even though on paper and it meets the criteria of having the gates and such there um, as per the recommendation of the CFA, the local CFA group as well, but I think there is a way forward that we can meet every, all the expectations across the community here um, to both meet the community needs as well as the need to keep our fire access tracks um, accessible and safe in emergencies when we need them. And I believe that we, we can find a middle ground in that. Um, the current road as it is, is, is usable if you if you wish to drive on it. It's not um, out of shape, you know, it is narrow. It's kind of like a long um, driveway um, in a sense, but it's quite nice and it snakes through a couple of trees there and the beautiful Upper Beakersfield countryside. So um, look, so myself, I am happy to support Councillor Owen in his um, in his motion. Um, just just lastly, are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this item before I hand it back to um, the mover to summarise? Um, 
There being none, I'll go back to you, Councillor Brett Owen, to summarise the side. Thank you, Mayor. And I'd, I'd like to thank all the councillors who've spoken for, for your, your support and comments. Um, I, I know the, the, the area quite well there, and um, I, I acknowledge uh, some of the residents have been maintaining the road, and I know there's been a long-term resident that's been doing that. So um, that just shows that the road is well utilised. It needs to stay open. I, I commend also your comments, Mayor, about the officers. Um, they've been, as a whole, this program has been very successful. And as I said before, I have received no other feedback from any other resident for any of the other sites that I have for this one because it's different. And you know, if this motion goes through, through um, this will you know keep this road open, and there's a commitment of council of maintenance, etc. But as I said before, I want the minimum that's required to to allow this to be open. Uh, open. Residents don't you know expect it to be upgraded to you know. You know, the 4C, you know, you know situation, but it's got to be, you know, obviously permissible to allow vehicles in it. So thank you, councillors, for your support, and I'll move so. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, councillors, we will now put this to a vote. All those in favour? I declare the item carried. All those against? Sorry, if there's any. I declare the item carried. Thank you, councillors. Um, moving along to item 6.2.5, report in response to motion, notice of motion 1055. Um, Councillor Ross, can I please ask you to leave the meeting while this matter is discussed? Uh, the CEO will send you an instant message on your phone when you're able to return to the meeting. So thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, this item is withdrawn by Councillor Brown. Uh, Councillor Brown? Oh, thank you, Mayor. I move that Council note that the independent audit by Justicia Lawyers into Councillor Colin Ross's expenses, the Justicia report, has been completed in accordance with the Council resolution signed from Notice of Motion 1055, 17th of August 2020 Council meeting. Two, Councillor Colin Ross's response to the Justicia report. Three, provide Councillor Colin Ross with 14 days within which to provide further response and four authorize the CEO to liaise with Justicia lawyers, Councillor Ross and Council's legal advisors to ensure that due process is followed in progressing the audit and its conclusions and that the CEO report on that progress at the November General Council meeting. I so move. Thank you Councillor Brown. Uh, can I have a seconder please? Uh, Councillor Moore. I second. I second for the purpose of discussion, Mr. Mayor. Yep, Councillor Moore. Thank you. Uh, back to you, Councillor Brown, to uh, speak to this item first. Um, thank you, Mayor. Just some background. Um, at the Council meeting on the on the um, 17th August 2020, um, following the recent publication of the Council Expenses Report and regarding Councillor Ross's positions on both the VLGA Board and the Metropolitan Waste and Resource Recovery Group. MWRRG board, I request one, that the CEO and Ms. Jeffs be given the authorization to contact the CEO of both organizations to gain answers to the following questions and others that she deems necessary. A, how much are board members paid? B, what is the purpose of these payments? C, is Councillor Ross involved with any subcommittees for the organizations? D, how long has Councillor Ross been a member of the board? and a member of any other committees associated with the organisation. E, how many meetings has Councillor Ross attended and been paid for as a board or committee member? F, what dates are these meetings held? Two, dates and information gathered is to be cross-referenced to the travel expense and out-of-pocket expense claims Councillor Ross has been reimbursed for by Council. Three, Full order that a kilometre is listed for each trip claimed by Councillor Ross is conducted using Google Maps as a reference. And four, a report with all the findings is presented to the September general meeting. This report should include a recommendation as to any further actions the Council may be required to take. Um, that was the notice of motion, Mr Mayor. Um, 
The Justinia report comprises 26 pages and all councillors have a copy. Um, it is important to note that Councillor Ross has not had the opportunity to respond to these findings prior to completion of, of this report. The review was a desktop exercise of travel expense claims and out-of-pocket expense claims lodged by Councillor Ross with Council for attendance at meetings with the VL Victorian Local Governments Association, VLGA, and the Metropolitan Waste Recovery Group. It's not my intent to go through the whole document to instead summarise the key finding and some other relevant comment. Uh, it's important to note that the report states that sitting fees paid by the VLGA and MWRRG are inclusive of expenses, including travel. I'll now go on to some of the instances, um, Mayor, and also the recommendation. The first instance is on four occasions, August 8th and 29th, November 28th and December 2nd, Councillor Ross received a sitting fee of $426 per meeting and was also reimbursed by Council for the travel expenses. The recommendation from the Justicia report that Council make further inquiries of Councillor Ross to determine if there has been a breach of legislation, code of conduct, conduct or policy. It is emphasised that Councillor Ross should have the opportunity to respond relating to claims made. Two, on another occasion, 22nd of August 2019, Councillor Ross received a sitting fee for a VLGA board meeting and reimbursed by Council for travel expenses for a VLGA event slash MWRRG event on the same date. Justinia report recommendation is that Council makes further inquiries from Council Ross to ascertain whether the claim is of some concern and may require further action. The report notes there were 38 MWRRG board and committee meetings within the given review period that Council Ross did not make any claims to Council at all. On another occasion, 15th of February 2018, Councillor Ross received a sitting fee by MWRRG and travel expenses mileage for a 136 kilometre return journey for his attendance at a paid AFRM committee meeting, which obviously is that's a subcommittee. Also claimed there was reimbursed travel expenses for his attendance at an unpaid MWRRG for a meeting. On two occasions, 30th October and 27th of November 2019, Council Ross was paid sitting fees of $388.11 by MWRRG for a board meeting and reimbursed travel expenses for a 136 kilometre return trip to the CBD. Council Ross also claimed and was reimbursed by Council travel expenses mileage, 136 kilometre return journey to the CBD for his attendance at unpaid meetings the MWRRG, SPAG, which is a subcommittee, and TORG, another subcommittee, meetings on the same dates. The recommendation from the Justicia report is that the Council seek further information from Councillor Ross to determine whether these claims are of concern or not. It would have been good if we had have had Councillor Ross's responses to these allegations in this report because uh, it's my opinion the report is sort of only half done, but that will be rectified, no doubt. Um, in respect of travel, Councillor Ross, according to his given examples of travelled routes, his claim for 166 kilometre return journey is for a shorter distance that he actually travelled. Councillor Ross was asked specific questions on the routes he took and not all were the same depending on time and traffic condition. Based on this information given, the kilometres travelled were greater than the 136 kilometres claimed. The review then proceeded to conduct an audit of the kilometres claimed in accordance with item three of the motion use of Google Maps as a reference process, as we all know, is to input the, the origin and the destination and Google will display the number of kilometres travelled. Although shorter than the, uh, the kilometre it's claimed, 
The report goes on and further states that the reviewer cannot attest to the accuracy of Google Maps calculations. Mr Mayor, the review is comprehensive. It does not make any allegations or conclusions that Councillor Ross has breached any rules. Indeed, it is simply reported the narrative and before any action is considered by Council, legal or otherwise, that Councillor Ross should be given the opportunity to respond. Which brings me to the second part of the recommendation, which is Councillor Ross's comments. Mm. And I think it's only fair that uh, I be able to um, give some of Councillor Ross's comments regarding these, um, this report. Uh, um, Councillor Brown, uh, to, so, sorry to interrupt. Look, the, the government's managers is, is just informing me that we've gone over our five minute allocated time for the speaker to speak to this item. Um, would it be possible for you to, to, to wrap this up in a, in a quick short frame or bring this back to your summary at the end? Um, well, I think this is a particularly um, important uh, item and to, to sum it up, um, I think it's doing an injustice to everybody at this particular stage. Um, everybody has a copy of the report. I'd just like to say that the report makes no allegations. Councillor Ross. Excuse me, excuse me, Mayor, can I? Sorry, Councillor Brown. Uh, um, sorry, Ed. So, everyone, look, Councillor Brown, if you'd like some more time, we just someone needs to move a re resolution to extend some time. Okay. I'm happy to do that, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councillor Wilmot and Councillor Moore or Owen. Yep, Councillor Moore seconds that. Thank you. So we have an extension of time for your discussion there. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, thank, thank you, Councillor Wilmot and Councillor Moore. Um, Councillor Ross's comments, which I've summarised to some degree, but I think it's important that he at least has the opportunity to have a say, even though he's not here. Um, he advised he's not been given a proper opportunity to respond to the findings and been denied procedural fairness and natural justice in the review process. He further states that this is confirmed by the report, which on numerous occasions states that he has not been provided with an opportunity to respond to the findings and observations in the report. He strongly denies any wrongdoing and given an opportunity will respond in a manner to satisfy council that his expense claims have been appropriately made. He states that there are errors in the findings or observations numbered 1245, which when given the chance can validate that on occasions. He was required to drive the disease twice in one day with 10 different meetings. He further adds that the timing of the motion and the unreasonable time frames upon which a motion is based that there was no time to allow his response prior to the document being, being published. He also states of particular concern to him considering the impending council election is that this patently unfair review process, Council Ross's words, with flawed outcomes could influence voting. He has noted that the review has assessed the overwhelming majority of his expense claims being without concern and only a limited number only, sorry, only a limited selection requiring further inquiry or advice. Just about there. He adds that in the past four years attending meetings of the VLJ and the, the Waste Board as a board member, and the past 12 years as a council delegate, there's never been concerns raised about the expense claim, including those in the review. He looks forward to being provided the proper opportunity to respond to these matters. The review also recommends that council review the expense claim forms and consider whether any amendments may be advisable if there are grey areas on those forms. They also review, to also review the claims process and consider whether changes to the process should be made. I will leave it there. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for the extension, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, I'll now go to Councillor, oh, sorry, before we, before we continue speaking on this item, um, there's been a, a several questions that have been brought forward to the CEO that we're going to um, we're going to address now before we discuss further on the item, um, and I'll hand it over to um, to our CEO Carol to bring those questions forward. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, these questions were provided directly to me today, and therefore did not come through our governance system, uh, and councillors haven't seen the questions. So I will take all of the questions on notice and provide questions and answers in writing to each questioner and provide them in the minutes. Um, many of the questions uh, require the council resolution of tonight, so to determine next steps. And so some of the questions can't be answered at this point. 
Secondly, um, I will not read or answer questions that were directly to Councillor Ross, as I cannot speak for Councillor Ross, and he is unable to respond due to his declared conflict of interest. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Ms. Jeffs. Um, I'll now go to Councillor Moore, the seconder of this item, uh, to speak to it, if you would like to. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I really don't have anything to add to this um, uh, discussion. I have read the, read the whole report completely, and I um, and I've uh, digested the contents, so I do know exactly what um, what Councillor Ross has said in his reports, as, as Councillor Brown has said. So I've really got nothing else to add to this at this time. To me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Um, do I have any other councillors that would like to speak to this item? Uh, Councillor Schilling. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to Councillor Brown, Councillor Moore as well for moving and seconding this item. Um, I'd like to start by thanking the CEO for getting this report back to councillors um, within ample time for us to consider its recommendations. We've had a few days to digest the contents of the report. Um, and also make our own make our own formulations based on the on the results. Um, I would like to note that the report actually doesn't fully address what was in the original notice of motion. In particular, item three, which calls for the full audit of kilometres listed from each claim um, conducted using the Google Maps reference. So it actually had a, a scope which is far more limited than what we actually had endorsed. Um, as a council, which um, is a little bit disappointing, but still I would say that the aspects of the notice of motion that were investigated, were done so in a very comprehensive uh, manner. Um, last month, I used the exact words, so I look back at, at what I said. I said, I, I hope that all questions can be answered and perhaps there's a logical explanation. And that was obviously in relation to the travel claims. And um, I still believe that there are some um, unanswered, unanswered questions. And, and for that reason, that's why I do support um, the recommendation that is listed um, tonight that's come to council. I think giving Councillor Ross a uh, the further 14 days to provide the relevant information in the notice of motion is sensible. I think that's good to be able to provide um, the uh, him with that opportunity and that also a further investigation is undertaken with the results to come back um, by the November General Council meeting. I also note that that extra 14 days is in line with um, Councillor Ross's reply stating that he only had 14 hours response time to the initial report. Um, I do think that there are some inconsistencies that do need to be looked into a bit further, particularly around the VLGA board meetings on the 8th, 22nd, 29th and 28th of August and November, uh, 28th of November and 2nd of December, um, around just that board payment in conjunction with the mileage paid by Kidinia Shire. But this situation does highlight something, that there's also flaws in the approval process of councillor claims and also some of our systems. And, I do hope that from a governance point of view that this can be used as a learning opportunity so that we can, you know, as an organisation, that can, I guess, design practices that do provide um, a bit more accuracy when it comes to the measurement of kilometres. And I understand that it is a, an honesty system where we're expected to um, put in what we claimed, but there needs to be that double checking, um, double checking process. And look, perhaps it's, it's come to a time where we do have to move beyond um, paper forms. GPS is very cheap and reliable these days. You know, perhaps that's something that the next council probably needs to look at as a matter of urgency, um, rather than us scribbling down our mileage on pieces of paper and signing it and sending it off. But that's probably um, another story for another day. But look, I do support um, this um, report tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Schilling. Um, do I have any other councillors that would like to speak to this item? Uh, Councillor Ryan. Thank you to you, Mayor. Uh, yes, we've all um, read the report and um, and there are flaws there. There's definitely flaws there as to uh, the way the claim has happened um, in the past and, and um, hopefully not in the future. Um, and not given enough time for Councillor Ross to, to come back and, and respond to um, this report is, is something that uh, is good that we're going to allow him that opportunity um, with his solicitor. And at this stage, as Councillor um, um, Brown has said, there haven't been any allegations or wrongdoings at this stage. So until um, there's proven anything different, 
the biggest um, thing that I find is that it would have been best if we were all investigated at the same time because we all we all claim travelling expenses and we all claim um, out of pocket. Um, expenses as well and so if there is a flaw there then it's a way of making sure that all councillors are covered and um, the right information is given to them so that they can fill out the forms properly and and that there won't be any disputes like this in the future i think the biggest thing is that um, it has had an effect on 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 people um, on their mental health in reference to everyone reading these reports and making a decision based on little information. So I'll look forward to more information coming back. And Councillor Schilling is right, maybe we need to look at um, electronic um, claims in future for the, the, the next council that, um, that may work. You can only try something different. If it doesn't work, you can always go back and try improving on what was already there. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Um, do I have uh, any other councillors? Uh, Councillor Jodie Owen. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in reading the report, there were several points that alarmed me. Um, through all councils in the allowance legislation, it says that councillors must take the most direct and shortest route to any meetings or any venues. When I read Councillor Ross's response to how he drives to Melbourne, it raised alarm bells in my head because I have never in my life considered driving from Pakenham through that route. The explanation was because of the toll roads. Well, the toll roads do not start until miles down the road past the point that Councillor Ross says he enters the freeway. I also note that in the directions that Councillor Ross himself has provided, he has himself turning in the wrong direction to go to the roads he states he has travelled for four years. There's a lot of discrepancies in this report. I would have welcomed with open arms an investigation into all councillors because I know I've got nothing to hide. So if that's what the CEO wanted to do, I would have welcomed it. I said back at the previous meeting, that if there was absolutely nothing to find and there was no discrepancies, I would have moved on. I would have dropped this and left it. However, with a degree in criminology, my integrity and my ethics are stronger. As councillors, our allowances are paid with ratepayers' money. It is not our money. And it is for this reason, I believe, as the officer's recommendation is, that further legal advice is also sought, I think that is paramount. This was not a witch hunt. It is not an election stunt. There have been emails, there have been queries raised with governance since I've been in office since 2012. And there are many other councillors out there that can attest to that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, would any other councillors like to speak to this item? Uh, Councillor Wilmot. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this report sort of fulfils the notice of motion, but not completely, unfortunately. Um, and I get it. They, they had a very short time span to uh, do this review. Um, so they didn't have the opportunity to conduct a thorough, thorough investigation into the Metro Waste Group. Um, and certainly they haven't done the Google map comparison into that trip. Um, so hopefully the, the continuation of this audit will spend some time reviewing that um, 
uh, thoroughly because I note, and Councillor Brown did mention it, that there was um, a number of trips, and if I can lay my finger on it, I think it was about uh, 38 board committee meetings that um, weren't claimed. However, during that same period, he did claim 30 events for that waste group during that same period as just events. Um, and we know that he, he's, he writes down the VLGA board meetings as events. He doesn't claim them as board meetings. Um, as far as I knew, he was a delegate at that, that group, not a board member. That only came, became apparent in June, July when I was doing my investigation, that he was a board member and the board members got paid. So there's a certain level of um, non-transparent behaviour here. Um, and I have a real issue with that. It's in our code of conduct that we actually uh, conduct ourselves with transparency. And I don't think there's been full transparency here at all. Um, and uh, I also note that Councillor Ross feels he wasn't given enough time to respond. And yes, he wasn't given enough time to respond to this final review report. However, on the 10th of August, he was sent an email asking questions that were very, very similar to what was in my notice of motion to be asked of these boards. He, so he's had since the 10th of August to respond. But on that date, he came back with a response that he wasn't prepared to provide any more details. So I just, I question what's been going on here for a very long time. I've been raising these issues since 2015. When as mayor, I was given a copy of his expense claims because there had been a freedom of information request. And I saw what his claims were like. So in 2016, I went about changing the way we do our claim forms to make them a bit more rigorous, and still that didn't happen. I've been raising this for years. So it's not a witch hunt. This has been ongoing. In fact, I came across an email that I sent to Graham Moore when he was mayor back in January of last year, questioning why Councillor Ross drove all the way up to the Shire of Moorable to attend the first meeting that Derek Madden conducted as the CEO. Cost ratepayers over three hundred dollars for him to attend that meeting, but it got paid. He claimed it, thought it was justified. Not sure what the uh, residents would think of that because I can't see any real benefit to the residents to have claimed that. But anyway, um, I look forward to um, seeing Councillor Ross's uh, explanation and response to this. And if I may, I'd love to like to ask the CEO a question on that, if I may, Mayor. Uh, yes, the CEO may. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Ms. Jeffs, if I could just clarify, the um, the recommendation has come back that uh, point three is that we will provide Councillor Ross with 14 days within to provide a further response. Um, could you clarify for me what will happen with that response? Is that response going to be made to um, councillors or what, what's the process there? Oh, thank you, Councillor Wilmot, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the council resolution does not currently, well, sorry, the recommendation doesn't currently specify that. So the current recommendation specifies that a process be undertaken, which follows due process um, following that. So at this point, no, uh, there's no requirement for me to distribute that response to councillors. Thank you, Ms. Jeffs. And um, I have to um, say I'm a little bit disappointed in that. I think um, all councillors tonight that have spoken so far have, have mentioned that they're looking forward to seeing what that response is and to hearing Councillor Ross's side of the story. Um, so I will ask Councillor Brown to consider including that uh, requirement as part of this notice of motion. Um, and I'll ask other councillors to support that if Councillor um, Brown is willing to add that to the notice of motion that is before us. Um, I, I've, I've got a lot of questions. This, this report does confirm that a lot of the suspicions I raised and circulated to you all are true. And it also confirms some that I wasn't quite sure on because he, he claimed on, I think it was October the 17th, that he attended the MAB State Council conference. And I wasn't quite sure because I knew that that was a VLGA board meeting date. But the, the CEO of the VLGA has confirmed in this report that he did attend 
all board meetings. So it confirms that on the 17th of October, he did attend the board meeting. Therefore, he would have been paid the, the uh, sitting fee, which would have covered his travel expenses. However, he did claim travel expenses from us as well. So that's another one that he's claimed. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what his responses are. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what the, um, the report in November brings back, because uh, I think there is just cause to investigate further. I think there's a lot of, a lot of questions to be asked. Um, and as I said in the previous meeting, if he was to follow the policy and put the, the detail that is required in the policy, this wouldn't have happened. The explanation of the trip that he takes into the VLGA in that report is, is amazing. As Councillor Owen said, I, why you would even consider going into the city via that route is just something unbelievable. And it de directly contradicts the policy which under point four, and this is the old policy, it's not the one that we uh, adopted in August, the old policy under point four, general provisions, number one dot point, that travel must be undertaken as quickly as possible and by the shortest route possible. Not one that is 28 kilometres longer than what the Google map recommended trip is. I'll leave it there um, and I hope that uh, you will support having his responses brought back to all councillors so that we can actually all have a good understanding of what his responses are. Mr Mayor, can I ask a question please? Yes, Councillor Moore, please. You can, you can, you can. Uh, um, I'd like to ask a question only because my name was uh, brought into this meeting, which is fair enough. I, I didn't intend that to happen, but as, as Mayor at the time, um, I want Mr. Evans to um, check on on the on the um, the trip to Warrnambool. I think that um, Councillor Ross uh, went went there, and I, I believe I believe, and I'd like to have this checked that he wasn't paid for that trip there and back. And um, I'd like that clarified. And if he was, okay, fair enough. But I just want to just check to make sure the facts are right here, uh, Mr. Mayor. If I can get that clarified uh, down the track somewhere, please. Thank you. Mm. Uh, thank, thank you, Councillor Moore, um, and I'll, I'll leave that with Mr Evans. I don't think you'll be able to pull it up right now necessarily um, as we're speaking, but I, I, well, he can jump in if he wants to, uh, if he has any information. Um, look, just a note to um, Councillor Wilmot's request of this additional um, point in the notice of motion that the um, that the that that councillor Ross's response is provided to councillors in 14 days time um, I've just been told that if if we want to include that uh, councillor Brown as the mover and councillor Moore as a seconder um, both need to approve that amendment to it and that can be part of this notice of motion um, if if you wish to do so and I'll I'll leave that for consideration when councillor Brown summarizes um, soon um, just putting out there if um, any other councillors would like to speak to this item um, before we I hand it back to the mover to summarise. Um, look, I'll just say for myself that look, I I, I welcome the recommendations in the report. Um, you know, that they, they give Councillor Ross an opportunity to come back with some uh, response to this for 14 days, and then I, I welcome to the um, CEO uh, looking into this of how you know, of what the steps are to be taken after that. Um, and I do also, what well, I would also like to include, as Council Wilmot pointed out, um, that councillors of this meeting today are provided that response so we can see that because at this point in time, there's no obligation to uh, to do that. And, and I'd be very interested to, to see the response to that and to see how this is uh, ties together in the end. So, um, so I hope that that will be supported. Um, I'll hand it back now to Councillor Brown to, um, to summarise on this item. Um, thank you, Mayor. Well, that was quite interesting, wasn't it? I mean, we're discussing this just teacher report and we got right off the track. We've been to Warrnambool. We've been back to 2016. We've been given examples of other um, transgressions in people's eyes that uh, Councillor Ross has done. But uh, it's interesting that it's not until now that people are jumping up and down about these things. The report is incomplete. I concede that, and Councillor Ross could have cleared up a lot of the um, areas in this report that probably need cleaning up. In respect of making it available to councillors, uh, the report is to be tabled at the November meeting. Now, 
how many of us councillors are going to be at that November meeting, I don't know. And I don't think it would be appropriate that if you're not a councillor, that you get a copy of this report. So I'm not going to move that. Um, somebody else can do that if they wish at a later date, but I'm not going to include it in my motion because I won't be part of a witch hunt. Um, I'll let the report unravel exactly what the issues are, exactly what Councillor Ross is accountable for, if anything. I do want to reiterate that I have only spoken on this report, uh, nothing more, nothing less, have not made any assumptions of my own, um, apart from reading into the report that there's been no allegations made of wrongdoing. I think as soon as people hear the word investigation, they think that that equals wrongdoing. Well, that's not always correct. So until I was, till Councillor Ross satisfies Miss Jeffs and the council, and they seek advice when they're in possession of all of the information, I prefer to give Councillor Ross the benefit of the doubt. All of us, all of us um, favour and want to see transparency in all of our dealings. And I include Councillor Ross in that, um, in that group as a member of this council. And that is why this motion was passed. This notice of motion was passed, is that we wanted to see transparency. Otherwise it would not have been passed. So I'll leave it at that, um, Mr. Mayor, and uh, yeah, leave it at that. Thank you. Mm. Uh, thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, uh, Councillor Owen, are you? Um... Sorry, Mayor, I just want clarification. So, for instance, if this uh, motion was voted down because of um, obviously the com comments about having that um, responses provided to councillors, what would happen there if this report was voted down? Is there an opportunity for another motion or, or not? Just some um, clarification, please. Uh, yes, and um, I welcome uh, the manager of governance to step in, but I would believe if, if this report right now was um, what was voted down and somebody um, foreshadowed that they wanted a, an alternative motion, I think that that, that included that provision, then uh, it would proceed, I would believe, but I would leave that to maybe Mr Evans to answer that question if he, if he may, or or Miss Carol Jazz if she likes. Mr Mayor, can you just give um, me a few minutes? Uh, it's a little tricky talking about process without being in person, so if you could just give me a minute to get you some advice. Um, certainly, councillors, and we'll just um, sit tight for, for a minute there and um, Ms Jeffs will come back to us on that. So um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for allowing me that bit of time. I just wanted to make sure that I had the right advice. So um, under the meeting procedure local law, the debate has closed. In order for that to happen, a councillor would have needed to foreshadow that they, in the event that this motion was lost, that they would be raising an alternative one. So unfortunately, because Councillor Brown has summed up um, that, that the, that the um, that the debate has closed. Mm. Uh, thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Jeffs. Um, uh, that, that, I hope that answers your question, uh, Councillor Owen. Um, I'll now get back to, um, thank you for your summary, Councillor Brown. Um, councillors will now put these to a vote. Um, all those in favour? I declare that carried. Thank you, councillors. We'll give um, Ms. Jeffs just a moment to, um, to contact Councillor Ross so he may bring into the meeting and then we'll continue once he has returned. All right, I can see uh, Councillor Ross has uh, joined us again. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, all right, we'll now continue. Um, moving along to the next item, item 6.5.1, major progress report withdrawn by Councillor Brett Owen. Councillor Owen. Thanks, Mayor. I'll move that the report be noted. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Uh, can I have a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Schilling. Um, back to you, Councillor Owen, to uh, speak to this item. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Schilling. Uh, obviously, this is a, a monthly report uh, updating Council and the community about progress um, of various um, items uh, before Council. So I just want to talk to some of the items. Uh, the Upper Beacon Hill Rec Reserve redevelopment of change room facilities. Um, I suppose COVID-19 has restricted some of these you know, works uh, from happening. Um, so I was really pleased that the uh, a consultation meeting with user groups was held uh, a week ago um, regarding this, uh, to, to recommence those conversations about design and also the master plan for the recre recreation reserve in Upper Beak. So this is really good that um, things are progressing in that space, long awaited improvements. It was really pleasing that the report talks about the uh, Princess Highway intersections and the one that I wanted to talk about is O'Neill Road. The last couple of uh, reports have indicated that we're just, uh, we've engaged the contractor, we've signed contracts, we're just waiting on the Department of Transport um, sign off. Um, so council has learnt today that uh, that, that sign off has been achieved and works will start very, very soon. Um, I understand uh, some power line removal has to take place first, but we'll see construction in the coming weeks. Long overdue. Um, you can also see some pegs already um, uh, in this area in relation to the work. Uh, this is going to be a major piece of work. It's not just the intersection light upgrade at this intersection. It's also the roundabout in um, O'Neill Road near Pink Hill Boulevard and also new pedestrian linkages on the south side of Beaconsfield, uh, linking the whole of south side of Beaconsfield on, on one continuous path, which is great from basically the Panorama Estate um, right into Beaconsfield. So that's really good. And that's all part of these works. Um, Kenilworth Avenue, I uh, visited Kenilworth Avenue um, and checked out the, the works and uh, it is so close to being completed. Uh, the seal's almost done and just the final um, 
uh, speed humps uh, need to be installed. So that's really positive news. And in the report, um, it talks about the Connect Cardinia Stage 2, and it's a really great update in relation to uh, that council delivered, uh, you know, will be delivering 25 kilometres of unsealed, you know, road improvements that is sealing those roads, and that's listed in the report. So, you know, progress is happening. These roads require detailed design and, and so forth. So it does take time to, to design these roads and, and then obviously go out to, to tender. So these are progressing as well as um, the, the Sealing the Hills uh, Roads program. Councils were updated by officers today about that uh, program and things are really progressing quite well. So great result. Um, that's all, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, I'll go to Councillor Schilling to um, speak to this item next. Thank you, Mayor. And um, look, um, Councillor Owen, I know is a big fan of this report, and um, look, it does give the community a good um, understanding of projects that are going on in the Shire. And um, it can be quite challenging sometimes because some people can get frustrated of the lack of speed in these projects coming on board. But um, the reality of it is, is the money is there, but by the time you get approvals for it from different statutory bodies, that can um, that can hold um, things up. So I'm happy to see um, the good news about um, the intersections going ahead. Um, there's two really quick projects. Um, the athletics track has been something we've worked on um, throughout this term of council, and the detailed design has now been done. So that will be the new athletics track at IYU Reserve. So it's great to see that that's um, uh, well and truly on, on the way as well and budgeted for. We also have the two mark reserve upgrades as well for the Southern Pavilion and Northern Pavilion due to be completed within 12 months, 12 months from now, so later on uh, next year. It's a great outcome that um, it's been a combination of funding sources and from the council contribution of it, it's something that we've all lobbied quite heavy for as well. So um, I'm glad to see that these projects are coming on board and thank you, Council Owen, once again, for moving this important report into the progress of our major infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Schilling. Um, uh, do I have any other councillors that would like to speak to this item? <clears throat> um, there being none, I'll just say that, it, look, it is a fantastic report, um, you know, and it's great to see at the end of our term, this is our last council meeting that we're having here tonight for this uh, term of council. Uh, so it's, it's great to see some of these projects um, it, that are still progressing and how they have progressed. And many of these projects are projects because they take a long time to get these approvals, as has been previously stated, right? So many of these projects are projects that we've kicked off in our previous council term. Um, so it's good to see these things um, are progressing and are coming to light. And I would like to, um, you know, especially thank the roads team and the uh, engineering department um, for the amount of work they've had to do uh, in the last year and a half or so to for all the road projects. The amount, um, if you look, summarise it all when it comes to the intersection removals, um, even coordinating around the state with the huge state projects, you know, Kadigna Road and such and everything, and then the whole sealing the roads package, which is enormous. It's something, it's beyond anything this council has done before. Um, delivered with, with um, funding from the federal government, which we very much welcome. So thank you to the federal government for, you know, for contributing to this, to make this happen for our community. Uh, but it, they do take time. It's detailed design and it's approvals. And such like O'Neill Road, which I really look forward to seeing those shovels in the ground. We've just been talking about that earlier this afternoon. Um, and that intersection is a long time in the making, but I want to commend our officers for the speed with which they have actually implemented this project because from, from the funding commitment that happened a little over a year ago, um, you know, to be able to get to this point when you have to get your ticks of approval of SP Osnet to, to, to move the utilities around, um, from the Department of Transport through all the state government bodies, um, if it was as simple as cancel, just like writing out a plan and going and delivering it, we'd get all these things done in no time. But there is, there is a, a regiment um, process towards approvals from the different authorities, and it is a major intersection which does not fall under our control. So, um, so I really want to thank the officers for pushing this forward and getting that work done. I look forward to using that intersection again, because I've used it in terrible peak hour times before trying to come out of O'Neill Road. It is dangerous and scary. So I, uh, I know the community will really welcome that, along with all the other intersection upgrades. Um, 
which again, you know, we so welcome the federal funding that came towards um, delivering these projects for us. Um, all right, thank you. If, are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? Uh, there being none, I'll go back to Councillor Owen to summarise. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Schilling. You said it very well, Mayor. Um, it is, they are very complex um, projects and I personally believe by Council, you know, running these Princess Highway upgrades, they, these projects are going to be delivered much quicker than any other government was to, to deliver them. So, um, yes, it has taken a bit of time, but as you said, they are very complex um, projects. So, I'm uh, very pleased that O'Neill Road is going to start very soon. And all the other ones are, are being designed and you know, you know, going through stages of the tender process as well. So uh, looking forward to that. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, uh, Councillor Owen. Um, I'll now put this to a vote. All those in favour? I declare the item carried. Thank you, Councillors. <clears throat> Uh, that concludes discussion of the items withdrawn. Um, can I please have a motion to adopt the recommendations for the balance of the items listed? Uh, Councillor Moore, and a seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Schilling. Uh, all those in favour, councillors? I declare that carried. Thank you. Reports or minutes of committees. Um, I note that reports from various committees have been received in addition to the minutes of recent council briefing sessions, and these are available if any councillors wish to view them. Uh, councillor reports. Um, councillors, do, do we have any, mission, any matters that you would like to report on? I'll open the floor up now to... Um, yep. Any councillors have any reports or, or they'd like to table to discussion? Yep. Councillor Brett Owen. You first, please. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to acknowledge the passing of, of, of an amazing community member. Um, that was uh, Ralph Smith. Uh, many councillors would know Ralph and um, his wife, Judy Smith. Uh, they were uh, long-term members of the Friends of Cardinia Creek, which is you know, obviously Cardinia Creek between Beaconsfield and, and Berwick, and there's a great uh, friends group there. Um, they established a group back in 98, Ralph and, and Judy. Um, they were passionately together to conserve the Beaconsfield Flora and Fauna Reserve and surrounds and educated the local community on the diversity and beauty of our natural environment. They led the friends group volunteer efforts on the fourth Sunday of every month, almost without fail, from 1998 to 2017. There were primary contact points for council, community liaison along the Cardinia Creek in Beaconsfield for the entire 19 year period. Ralph and Judy annually organised the National Tree Day planting and Clean Up Australia events within the reserve. It would be difficult to quantitate uh, the amount of rubbish that they have annually picked up at the reserve. Through their rubbish audits, it would uh, be roughly five to 10 square metres, uh, cubic metres, sorry, um, each year. That equates to, you know, uh, you know, between 95 to 190 cubic metres of rubbish over those years. And I've, I've had the pleasure of, of, of helping uh, the clean up uh, Australia Days down there and both of them, Ralph and Judy, you know, we're, we're very passionate on this. Um, Ralph lived a life um, to the fullest, actively working within the reserve and bike riding, even recently completing in the Great Victorian Bike Ride event. Um, he was someone who was always happy and would always brighten up your day. Uh, he often wore um, fluoro um, sort of, um, workwear, um, so definitely brightened people's lives up. Ralph will be sadly missed by many in our environmental community and more broadly throughout the Shire. And, Ralph and Judy lived just across the creek in Berwick, but they spent so much time in Beaconsfield helping the environment there. And, and it's just in recent years, they moved to uh, cutting your waters in, in Pakenham. And, and even there, because uh, it uh, abuts Deep Creek Reserve, they were heavily involved in environmental uh, projects down there and, and at the uh, retirement village, you know, starting up an environment group and amazing work. So I just want to acknowledge uh, Ralph and, and thank um, and all our thoughts are with Judy and family. 
But uh, thank you, Mayor, for allowing me to do that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, do any other councillors have, have any matters they'd like to report on? Um, I might just jump in uh, for a moment um, and just uh, freestyle a little bit, but I want to just take this opportunity. This is our last council meeting for this council term. Um, and so I'd like to take the opportunity to, to thank my fellow councillors here. Uh, four years ago, uh, I came along uh, fresh face. I'd never, um, you know, I'd, I'd never actually been into uh, the Civic Centre to view a council meeting in previous to that, um, or to know much about you all. But you know, it's been an absolute honour and a pleasure to be working with these, my eight fellow councillors through these last four years, and we've achieved some great outcomes in those times. Um, you know, I think we've all done a great job in our respective communities um, and, and our passion and our care and our differences of opinion, which is which is perfectly normal and okay, and it makes a good, robust council. Um, I often hear from the officers that, you know, this is one of the best council groups they've um, ever witnessed, and, you know, and I believe that would be true. I think we really have a, a great, unique uh, cohort of community-minded people here, and would like to thank you all for the support you know, you've given me in this last year as um, my term of mayor, and but also for the connections and the projects that we've worked together in the last four years. Um, of which I think probably one of our greatest achievements was selecting Carol Jess as our CEO um, a couple of years back. We really did. We did a great job choosing her, and she has shown us um, sh shown us how capable and fantastic she is in this role, both with a disaster we faced last year with the Bunyip uh, bushfires, and now again, as we face this most unprecedented time in our world. It's certainly, um, you know, she's a test. We've really did great with Carol there. So I just want to put a special thanks out to, to Carol and all the effort she's put in over the last uh, two years. All the officers as well that have worked closely with us with this uh, senior leadership team and right down to every um yeah every officer that's in our organization many of which are local members of our community as well but we have a great organization here uh, you know great people uh i can't i can't say it enough just to thank you all for our time together so um so i appreciate that councillors. so thank you um Again, councillors, I'll just open it up if anyone else would like like any um thing to say uh, at this point in time. Uh, you, you're welcome to. Hmm. Uh, Councillor Wilmot first. Thank you, Mayor. And yes, I do have a few words I'd like to say. Um, and for those who don't know, um, I won't be restanding at this election. So this is my very last council meeting. Um, when I was elected in 2012, I hoped that I would be able to do two terms as councillor, and that's what I've had the very good privilege of doing. Um, so a lot of what I'm about to reflect upon is what happened during this term. There's also reflections of what's happened over the last two terms as councillor. And during the two terms as councillor, I've been very fortunate to have a lot of my aspirations come to reality. Um, during the first term of council, one of my aspirations was to provide support and training for volunteers. And this has resulted in the leadership program, uh, which has run over the last three years. And just last week, the, the most recent group did their graduation and it was inspiring to hear them take their pledges and talk about what they had gained through that program. So it's one that I hope will continue for many, many years to come as it's a great value to our residents and our volunteers. Another aspiration was to look into the issue of homelessness in the Shire, as I was seeing it every day in my local area, and I still do. This resulted in a number of research projects, which led to the development of the Social and Affordable Housing Strategy and Action Plan. And I'm incredibly proud of the housing projects we've delivered in partnership with other service providers in the last few years, um, with more to come. And I've also had the privilege to chair the Social and Affordable affordable housing partnership group for the last 12 months. The establishment of a called advisory committee was also one of my aspirations and that group was developed um, earlier in this term and to date they've held a forum for the multicultural community in late uh, 2018 and they've been involved in developing um, 
the new cultural diversity plan and in a number of consultations, including the recent consultation in the development of the multicultural hub. Uh, joining the Racism It Stops With Me campaign was a proposition that I brought to Council and I'm pleased Councillors supported Kadinya Shire joining this campaign. And the Call Advisory Committee has been involved in developing a couple of projects to support this campaign. Unfortunately, one of them was the Walk Against Racism that was planned for the end of March. And of course that had to be cancelled due to the pandemic. But another project will take place as soon as the restrictions are lifted and you'll have to wait to see what that one is, but it will be great. Another aspiration was to bring community get members together to discuss issues faced by the Shire and to, to develop possible solutions. This resulted in the community summits. Unfortunately, the fires last year and the COVID pandemic this year has resulted in these events not being held, but hopefully it'll be back next year and for years to come. I've been involved in many advisory committees over the eight years, but two of the groups that I'm proud to have contributed to are the Arts and Cultural Reference Group and the involvement I had last term in the development of the Arts Feasibility Study and the redevelopment of the Cultural Centre, which resulted in the opening of the new art gallery earlier this term. The second is the Tourism Board. This started as an advisory committee in 2013 with the launch of our very first um, tourism strategy. And it's now an independent board which has major plans. Again, most of them have been put on hold because of the pandemic, but they're working actively working towards um, plans to support the industry during recovery. Other committees that have been part of include the Australia Day Reference Group, the Audit Committee, Emerald Lake Park Advisory Group, Grants Evaluation Committee, Hills Hub Steering Committee, Together We Can Roundtable, and more recently, the Economic Recovery Committee. My favourite and proudest moments, naturally being elected Mayor in 2014 has to be top of the list. I was the last councillor to chair a meeting in the old Shire Chambers and the first councillor to chair a meeting in the new Civic Centre Chambers. The opening of the Civic Centre with the Governor of Victoria at that stage, Alex Chernoff. The opening of the Anzac Walk in, in Emerald with the then Governor General of Australia, Sir Peter Cosgrove. Receiving a cheque for the Hills Hub development of $1.5 million from the then, Premier, oh, sorry, then Prime Minister, Tony Ablett. One of the best things you do as Mayor is the citizenship ceremonies. And I love being part of such an important day for so many of our residents. I've loved working with the different advisory groups and the community groups and being able to support the projects that have been important to them. I'm also proud of how many Capital Works projects the ward councillors over the two terms have been able to achieve in the Rangers ward, but in particular, the Hills communities of Emerald, Cockatoo and Gembrook. For many years prior to 2012, these communities were lucky if they received the odd footpath. Over the last eight years, we have upgraded playing services, services at rec reserves, delivered pavilions, upgrades at Chandler, Worrell and Gembrook is underway, new netball courts at Gembrook and Emerald, as well as a new pavilion at Emerald, the development of walking tracks and other improvements at Pepe's Land, upgrades at the Cockatoo Community Centre, the construction and opening of the Ash Wednesday Bushfire Centre, the redevelopment of the Gembrook Play and Skate Park, the new playground, BMX pump track and upgrade and skate park at the Old Matrullo Reserve, the future upgrade of the senior cottages in Cockatoo, the final stage of the multi-use trail between Cockatoo and Gembrook, which had been forgotten since the early 2000s, the Hills Hub development, and I'm sure there's some that I've forgotten along the way and there are still more that are desperately needed to be done. So I hope this momentum continues in the next term of council. Things I will miss, working with the community. Whether it's a community group or an advisory committee of council, I've had the opportunity to get to know some amazing people and learn about the incredible work they do for our communities. I will also miss working with the amazing staff of this organisation. I've shared some truly memorable moments with some of you and some really good laughs as well. I thank you all for your support and for making my time as a councillor so easy and memorable. Things I won't miss, reading, briefing and meeting agendas, particularly those thousand plus page agendas that come every now and then. Things I'm looking forward to, 
reading a novel instead of agendas, having weekends and evenings back, getting back into my studio and giving my creative side an opportunity to kickstart again, and eventually having the freedom to travel. Where to from here? I plan on continuing working as a volunteer, particularly in the areas of my main passions and interests, which is our core, our core communities, and advocating for the homeless and the vulnerable communities. Not sure where exactly I'll focus my attention at the moment, um, but I'll take some time and investigate what suits best. I also plan on doing some more study in a couple of my major interest areas, and I've also been looking into doing the certificate course into becoming a marriage celebrant. In closing, I would like to thank my ward colleagues um, and all the different community members I've had the pleasure of working with over the last four years. I wish my ward colleagues the very best in the upcoming election, and I'm sure you will continue to represent the residents of the ward um, in the way you have over the last four years. Um, I wish that I didn't have to say this, but the next election looks like it's going to get really messy. It's going to be very different to what we've seen before in Cadinia. The nominations are still open at this stage, but it's looking very different. So it's going to get interesting, and I'm really looking forward to sitting back on the sidelines and watching the events unravel. Thank you, everybody, and best of luck in the future. Mm, uh, thank you, Councillor Wilmer. Um, thank you. Uh, I'll go to Councillor Ross to, um, to, to speak. You would like to. I'll let Councillor Owen speak first. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, Councillor Councillor um, Jody Owen. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ross. So, after much consideration, and because I'm a person of my word and said I'd only ever do two terms on council. Myself and my new fiance have decided that it's in my best interest to leave council, and I'm so excited. Firstly, I never thought I'd be elected in 2012. I honestly didn't. It was a dream, it was a passion, and I got there. To then be in a council that was so productive, that all got along, that made the work enjoyable, was just outstanding. To be elected mayor, never in my life, never. I left school at 17 to join the army. If someone had said to me I'd be the mayor of this fantastic shire, I wouldn't have believed you. I wouldn't have believed I'd be able to do it. But I did and I loved it. I loved every moment. I loved meeting Malcolm Turnbull. I loved working my fingers to the bone and as nerdy as it is, I've said to my kids and I will say to my grandkids, I will love going and standing on O'Shea Road and knowing I stood there and it was a silly, girly question that got us the Monash upgrade by me asking Mr Fletcher from Canberra the difference in grading of roads and then for Gary McQuillan to get the phone call that we'd got the federal funding after banging our heads against the wall was fantastic. The banter I had with Luke Dinellen over when he would give me the state money and then confidentially having a joke with Gary that I'd find out before him. Luke Dinellen stuck to his promise and rang me before Gary to say that in the state budget, he'd be delivering the extra money for us to get the Cadinia Road upgrade. So that was an outstanding achievement. Gary wanted to kill me on the night of the council meeting because I announced it in councillor reports and he didn't think Cadinia had the money. And it was the only time I beat Gary McQuillan to making an announcement. What I'm most happy about is I'm now a history teacher. I've now got three degrees, I've got a beautiful career and I've got a beautiful future life. We just need these borders to open up. Um, one of my, my most outstanding achievements was changing graffiti management in this shire. As someone with a criminology degree, I 
lobbed into the Civic Centre, already having all the leads lined up and had the MOU signed within being elected within a very short amount of time, which was amazing. Working with the depot staff to change how graffiti is cleaned, saving the residents a quarter of a million dollars a year, still is up there. Having the first reconciliation action plan by withdrawing us from a useless committee that was just being rude to our Indigenous residents was outstanding. Our age-friendly cities, accreditation and the work I did with Kelly Burdick, Terry Larkman and all the other beautiful people, thank you. World Health Safer Cities accreditation, I know Councillor Owen opened it, but I worked with many of the staff to get that off the ground. So that was fantastic. Finally, to get a toilet in Lakeside. And I got that by being sneaky and getting Gary to put a question in a survey. And he said to me on that night, if you put the survey in, if you put the question survey, you've got to build the toilets. Well, Lakeside got their toilets after waiting for years. So fantastic. There's so many other things that I could prattle on about, but I'm not. I'm simply going to say I leave here happy. I leave here content with what I've done. I'm not going to read social media because I don't care. I hope that those that come in behind me do so for our community. Don't do it to get on state or federal. Love your community and get elected because that's what's important because that's what's kept me going. Even when I've had detractors, because I work full time now, saying, oh, she's not doing a great job because she's not devoting 50 hours a week. Yes, I have. Just because I'm not on 50 committees, that's because I couldn't attend them. I'm not going to take a place on a committee when I knew I couldn't attend. But in these last couple of years, I've loved being on the Library Corporation Board. I've loved seeing the opening a bundle and the partnership there. And I hope we flourish for our residents with libraries. In closing, I'd like to thank all my family, my friends here and in the USA. And thank you so much for your love and support over these eight years. It's been an absolute blast. I never thought it would happen and it did. So thank you so much. And thank you to my fellow councillors we haven't always gotten along, but we've got the job done. There's some of you that will be friends for life, and I thank you for that. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, well, well said. Um, uh, are there any other councillors that would like to speak at this time? Uh, Councillor Ross. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I must say, I think this is a really good injection. This is the first time in 12 years on council that we've had, actually had an opportunity to sort of talk at the end of a term. And I must say, uh, I think it was a good suggestion on, on, your, on your behalf. Uh, I must say, I never had an opportunity to actually t speak at the end of myself being mayor because I had to go away uh, interstate for the present mayor who came after me. He actually asked me straight away, can you book in to go to that? Because the meeting is going to start straight away and I won't be able to go. So I never got an opportunity to actually share just some of those things. So I, I think that's that, that's a really good thing. I I am um, enjoying very much so listening to other councillors share what their experience has been and some of the highlights that they've shared on their time on council. Um, I'll, I'll just start off by saying I, I, I feel on this four years on council, um, um, on, on the on the rate situation with rate capping, I'm really, really proud of that. That that came a long way and I've been proud to support that all the way. Um, also too, um, I'd like to just say um, that um, like, like some of the other councillors have shared, uh, it took me 10 years before I had the opportunity to become mayor. And I must say um, it was an, absolutely an honour and a privilege to have that opportunity to serve the community at a higher level in 2017 and 18. I must say uh, that was probably the busiest um, year of my life. Um, I think I missed three events for the whole year because I was double or triple booked. Um, and some of the highlights from those things were uh, opening Gumbire World, opening the Officer uh, Secondary College. I think um, during that year, 
I met 13 ministers of the state government and, and opposition at least twice trying to advocate because we were an important seat and we had that opportunity to meet with them on those regular occasions. I know that we walked through those four crossings with Jacinda Allen at least twice on both of them. I must say this council staff did an amazing job to talk with them about what we would like to see happen uh, and the car parks associated to those crossings. At train stations, I must say that the McGregor Road on, on and off ramps, um, I must say I'm, I'm most proud of the, the arts grants that um, residencies that they've got down at the art, at the cultural centre, which are, are still being developed. I must say, continuing from Councillor Owen, I can remember talking with the, the government about only bringing the extension of the, um, the lanes on the Monash Freeway to Clyde Road. Um, and, and therefore, they, they agreed to continue the extension all the way to Cardinia Road. And that wasn't going to happen, but they agreed to do it. So that was excellent. Also too, I must say, uh, when you become mayor and in the first week or week and a half, you have Gary McQuillan, who's the long time CEO, hand you an envelope and say to you, um, in there's my resignation, I'll be finishing up in 10 months. That sort of throws a whole lot of things that you had in mind out the window because it becomes really, really important that we we get the best um, person we can to lead the um, to the uh, council into the future. And I think that we we as a collective achieve that, and that I'm really proud of that. Um, also, too, I must say um, some of the other things that I, I found amazing was uh, the Growing Suburbs Fund. I attended the three days in a row in my first three years, we couldn't do it this year, in at Parliament House, where we met with all the different parties to talk about a growing suburbs fund. It, it raked in about an extra $4 million a year on, on average over that time. So we got between you know roughly $15 million, $16 million that we didn't have in our budgets before that. I must say um, I missed um, three, three meetings during my time um, on this term on council. Um, and one of those was um, when I was mayor and a couple of those were when I was deputy mayor. I must say, I think the deputy mayor role was the most challenging role because Councillor Moore did an amazing job as the mayor. He had the Bunyip bushfires and he was a one-stop shop up there where he lives. Um, he basically said to me, um, I need to be here. And I said, you do. And he said, well, you're going to have to go everywhere for me because I can't be at two places at once. So therefore, I basically went to a lot of things that I went to as mayor at, during that time. So that was an unbelievably busy time. I must say, uh, I had to go on behalf of the mayor interstate to Canberra a couple of times because we had a federal election coming up too. I think the advocacy with the Interface Council group raked in for Cardinia Shire probably closer to $200 million that we didn't have budgeted. Um, so that was excellent that we could be part of that, and I could be part of that too. I must say it's been an amazing uh, journey. I really enjoy working hard for the community and serving the community, and that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much for this opportunity, Mr Mayor. Mm. <clears throat> thank you, uh, you Councillor Ross. Um, would any other councillors like to, like to speak at this time? Uh, Councillor Shelley. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just have a few words. So I remember um, being present in the gallery back in 2016 as I um, watched the final council meeting for that term of council. And I remember that night clearly because it was, it was a small agenda, um, a little a bit of a contrast to tonight. Um, and I guess I was left wondering whether I'd have the privilege of serving on the next council. And a few weeks later, we all stood in the Hidden Cultural Centre to watch that famous VEC button push that everyone um, speaks of and it was one of the happiest moments of my life learning that I'd been elected to serve our amazing community in, in Central Ward and, and the broader Shire. Um, fast forward four years, I don't think we could ever have expected that we would end up in the middle of a global health pandemic and I guess I'd like to take a bit of time to um, reflect on what has been a tremendous journey and I can honestly say despite our differences sometimes as a councillor group, I do think at the end of the day we've ended up making the right decisions for our community based on the best available evidence that we've had at the time. Um, we enter council with our passions, our aspirations, and hopefully a drive to make a difference. And as I reflect over the past four years, I'm proud to have achieved some things 
um, my aspirations that I came to council with and also take part in things that I've been really passionate about as well that council have been involved in. And that includes the implementation of our livability plan, which was a blueprint on how we care for our communities most vulnerable. Um, thanks to the work of this council, there are families that now have a safe place to call home without fear for their safety. Um, one of the more challenging moments for us as a council, but I feel um, we've got some amazing outcomes. Um, a few years ago, like we've stood up to some inappropriate gaming applications that if we didn't have that advocacy in the wrong place could have caused the community some significant stress. We enhanced our transparency by having live streaming, bringing people, bringing council into people's land rooms um, if they choose to dial in. We took action to um, make sure climate change is taken seriously as a council. Um, as Councillor Wilmot said, we've endorsed a campaign to try and stamp out racism in our community. Young people can now get involved in local political process through Youth Council, which was one of my favourite um, projects to work on in this council term, which is now in its third successful year. And all in that, we've endorsed structure plans, master plans, approved amazing infrastructure um, that our residents will benefit from from years to come, whether or not we're here in a few weeks' times or not. Um, and I'll always be proud to have been able to serve the community. Um, I'm forever grateful uh, for the support from colleagues, staff and the community that I've been able to achieve um, my aspirations on council. Um, I know there's more to be done, so hopefully, hopefully I get the opportunity to do that again. I'd like to pay a special thanks to the council staff who worked tirelessly behind the scenes to keep our community in great shape. Um, it'd be nice to be able to thank people specifically, but I think overall our staff do a fantastic job in keeping the community um, connected together and making sure that um, we do have the right infrastructure and we're informed to the best of our ability. Um, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the support of our residents and great people that keep our communities going. From our amazing local residents group in my current central ward, at Lakeside, Heritage Springs, Cadinia Lakes, to the passionate locals who I've had the opportunity to follow their projects through. Also to the hard working community volunteers that dedicate their energy and commitment to making our community a great place to live. Um, as councillors, we're the voice for these amazing people um, at the council table. But one of the proudest moments is being able to sit back um, and just watch people in our community succeed and, and do what they do. Um, I guess my biggest thanks goes out to my family. I became a parent this term of council and my little five-year-old had to adapt to having a parent in the public eye. And it probably wasn't until that point that I realised how challenging it is for families and children to have a parent in the public eye. And I love what I do and I would love to keep doing it again. But I think it's important to acknowledge that any form of politics takes a huge toll, takes a huge toll on families. And it's a big sacrifice families have to make um, to support us and have us here. And families come in all different shapes and sizes and forms, strong, close friends, friendships. Um, so whatever, whatever um, form a family takes, I think it's important to be able to thank them because without them, it would be, it'd be quite challenging. Um, once again, this has been one incredible journey and um, I hope to be able to continue it post the 2020 election. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Schilling. Um, do I have any other councillors that would like to speak, speak at this time? Yep. Councillor Moore. Oh, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, I'll keep this nice and short. As you know, I'm a, I keep myself as a low profiler, but I'll um, just I'd like to reflect on the past four years of service as a councillor. I'd like to thank the community for their support. It's been an honour to work with you all. Fort Ward is such a large and, large and diverse ward, which consists of many rural and farming areas and a community who are proud of their townships and their sporting facilities, as we know. It's always difficult to deliver community infrastructure. Our boundary our rural areas in our shire. So I've been de delighted to be a part of some major developments being built in our area. Example, the Bunyip Soccer Pavilion, the upgrade of several, and I mean several, sporting facilities. The Nanagoon Cenotaph have just been finished. And unfortunately, we never got a chance to open it. Major regional developments of the Deep Creek Reserve and the Lang Lang Recre Recreation Reserve, to just to name a few. The roads and drainage issues in this large ward, with many kilometres of unmade roads, 
are, are always been a challenge, and constant monitoring and maintenance has been required. They've endeavoured under the current funding to maintain and deliver on these concerns and our community's concerns. I congratulate the maintenance staff on the positive outcomes, particularly of recent times. It's been fantastic, those road, the road maintenance crews. It was an honour to serve as mayor in a very difficult time, as stated by the De deputy mayor at the time, Councillor Colin Ross, when the Bunyip State Fire bushfires erupted and destroyed homes and businesses. And luckily, no lives were lost. I live close to Bunyip State Forest, and our fire restrictions plan were put into motion. Over this tragic time, all services, staff of council, community, rallied and support one another as a team. And at these times, you really see how amazing communities are and can work and support one another. And of course, as mentioned before, Carol Jess, of course, was a new CEO at the time. So it was quite a um, apprenticeship to uh, roll into our council. I would have loved and loved to um, have the opportunity to be involved in the opening the Lang Lang Recreation Reserve after all this time getting the project over the line. I'd also have liked to have finalised the strategic township plans of the Narnagoon and Tainong uh, townships, have them finalised, but this hasn't come to pass, but they're well on their way. I'd like to thank my fellow councillor, Ray Brown, for his support in work, working through issues with me as a team. We went, worked together very well in Port Ward. Although we didn't always agree, I'll hesitate there, we didn't always agree, even though we agreed to disagree, but that is democracy. Healthy debate is always good and always welcome with us. And I cherish those times, Councillor Brown, that we shared. I wish all the fellow councillors, my fellow councillors, who are retiring or renominating for election, all the best. And I look forward to seeing them in the future, one way or another, in one shape or form. And finally, finally, may I say, I want to thank my family, my personal family, for their support. Because without them, I wouldn't be able to do this. They support me all the way through thick and thin for all my endeavours. And uh, my wife is just the rock behind this person, and I, I tell you, I wouldn't be with anything without her. So uh, thank you, Councillor, and I wish you well for the future. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Um, do I have any other councillors that would like to speak at this time? Uh, Councillor Ryan. Thank you, through you, Mayor. And it's lovely to sit here and hear um, everyone's aspirations and what they've achieved in their term and, and how they see cancel from the start to where they are now and, and, and leaving um, some of them. Um, I think for me, um, mentally challenging is probably the big word I can use. When elections um, happened four years ago um, and the, the numbers were being rolled, Councillor Schilling kept bringing me during the day saying, I think your numbers are coming in. And I had to keep saying to him that um, that's lovely to hear, but I don't want to hear because I'm ready to do a wedding and I had to turn the phone completely off. Um, but I think Councillor Schilling was very excited about that, that um, he was keeping an eye on the numbers that the voting was going, um, being conducted in the right way. Um, some of the challenges uh, with um, and achievements with the team, and, and I valued uh, the team input in Central Ward. We had a lot to do, it was very complex, and to be here since 1979 and see what's developed now within Hackenham and, and Kandinia Shire um, has been enormous. And what this team has done, we've all, we all have unique qualities that we've brought to cancel, all different, all unique, 
And yes, sometimes we didn't always see eye to eye, but that was what was good about the challenges, is that the challenge was to convince that other councillor that this was the right decision to make in your area um, and have that understanding and, and, and try and explain it to the, the best of your ability. Um, some of the achievements we did achieve in, in Central Ward was we, we um, achieved three cr um, crossings for pedest uh, our pedestrians that, that desperately needed crossings, um, especially across um, McGregor Road and um, um, Racecourse Road. They were two uh, that stood out quite intensely because people are with the traffic it was unless you waited for the train to go across you couldn't get across that road um getting and encouraging headspace to come out for the youth when i first came in i was continually going down and visiting headspace in nary warren and said at that time that i think it was a good idea if, if headspace could um, somehow talk around ministers to get them down there and get funding. And that's been achieved. Unfortunately, it's only for one day a week, but it's a starting point. And, um, and I think that's really, really great. Um, the extensions to the Culture Centre, the extensions for, for giving the art space, the dance rehearsal studio, and one little room called the green room that was forgotten about until it was mentioned that um, for some of our top artists to come down and entertain our community needed a better environment for them to relax while they're waiting to go and do their show. So that's been achieved. So we're all really proud of um, the Culture Centre and what's, what's happened there. Um, the library, new carpet, uh, a new water fountain and new study benches, which were badly needed for um, quite a few students that were going in there and studying because they didn't have um, that area at home, maybe because um, younger, younger members in their family. And so it was a nice, comfortable place for them. The completion of the IYU Pavilion, the completion of the James Bath Pavilion, One of my biggest achievements and what I came in with was I campaigned very intensely on mental health and mental ill health within our community and not having services for people that deserved it and people in our community that couldn't afford uh, the expenses of a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a psychiatrist um, extensive um, treatment and and bulk billing. We we didn't have that here, but probably that's been one of my biggest biggest aspirations and biggest challenges. And working alongside Martin Foley, our Minister for Mental Health Victoria, and doing a lot of forums with him and. Um, and just learning a lot more knowledge of what he could help me with, but also working alongside um, the Fellowship of Mental Mental Health that I've worked with. I think the biggest thing for mental health within and COVID has brought it to the, the the surface, but there's always been mental health from generation after generation, way back past the 1800s that we know of. It's come a long way and people are talking and that's what I have I hoped to achieve by just bringing it to council and working in partnerships of 16 partnerships that we could achieve something by simply just getting people to talk about it and not be afraid to talk about it and have that discussion and it's come a long way since then and it will keep going a long way because eventually we will get services out here and it's not that far off. So I'm proud to be part of that, that achievement. There was a park up near me that since 2009 didn't have any play equipment. And they questioned why they didn't have any play equipment. 
because other parks were getting play equipment or updates. And but families and grandparents became very creative. They they um they had races down the hill. Um, some of them falling over, which was a little bit risky, but um, the community came together and they, they had go-karts, which um, many years ago when I was a kid, we had go-karts. So it was lovely to see that creation and having kites. You don't see people running around with kites with their children, but that, that was happening down there as well. And I achieved a, a, a play equipment being installed this year. Took a while but we got there and um, I'm so thrilled working with the team and getting it there in time for the, these families to enjoy. And since the park's been back open, everyone is using it and they, they've just got smiles on their faces, which is fantastic. Senior Citizens was another aspiration and project that I wanted to bring forward because I didn't see much happening for our senior citizens. The senior citizens building got um, repainted inside. They had a disabled sliding door at the front. So if people in wheelchairs or walking frames don't have to open the door, it automatically opens for them. They have um, yes, new carpet. And I remember one of the senior citizens saying to me when I first went around there to talk to them, you won't come back, you won't talk to me. Well, on a monthly basis, I was going to senior sits and taking my book because I always came back with things to report or concerns that they had. So I, I really was happy that that was achieved. And part of the achievement with seniors was ageing well strategy um, 2019 to 2025 um, plan to educate some of our seniors on elder abuse. Again, talking about elder abuse and being aware of it and getting other people to talk and setting that domino effect again. I also was part of the Together We Can um, round the table with um, Councillor Wilkmont and that was really there was a lot of fun happening there, but also a lot of achievements. And the team that was working together were working really, really well on projects that were community-based. And to see a lot of those changes that are happening now is fantastic. One of the other things that I really pushed for is um, defibrillators and training. There wasn't any in the library in Pakenham nor in the Emerald Complex as well. And I'm proud to say that I got two of them installed uh, for the community. It's about safety and it's about saving people's lives and um, with the training and, and, and with the staff within the library and the complex um, and uh, U3A were participating in that as well. Um, it was a bit hard with the dummies for some of them because it was very, very intense for um, um, doing resuscitation as anyone's done the training. It's not easy to push on someone's chest and, and get it right, but the machine kept telling you whether you got it right or wrong. Um, upgrading the Tumac Valley, a uh, Tumac Reserve disabled toilet. That had been broken for many, many years and kept getting forgotten and just left. So that's been fixed. The beautification of the BJ Wallace Gardens, that is still in process of being upgraded with new plants. The uh, rotunda is being uh, fixed and repainted. There's new seating going in there. There's more seating going around for our seniors. And there's a lot more um, possibly exercise programs that are going to happen for seniors within that area. Um, it was a forgotten park that people weren't really utilising it. So now we're seeing more and more people out there. The historical building and painting on the outside, which badly needed that done in Pakenham. 
parent zone and getting the 40 kilometres an hour near the parent zone at Packenham Hills Primary School. That was really important because that's on Army Road, which is a very busy road because you've also got the bus uh, that goes in there as well. So it was um, it was an important zone that needed to be at that speed. I think working along with the team within Cancel has been absolutely wonderful and I've appreciated everything that I have learnt from the teams but also the friendships, also the knowledge and skills that I've gained even further from coming into Cancel. I think I was really overwhelmed in Cancel when I first came in and Derek brought out a big book because he did a one-to-one -one, um, sit down with me and um, and the book was this thick and he said you've got to learn all of that in six months. Well I said I was retiring then I wasn't going to follow through with cancel and I'm glad that I didn't give in um, but he taught me a lot and I really appreciate it. I'm really going to miss some of the people within cancel that have been supportive, innovative, unique. And I think they're the words that make up our, our cancel as is because I want to give everyone so much credit because we have worked well as a team and we have had some good laughs. We've had some ups and downs. We've had some traumas with the pandemic, but we're getting through it as a team. And um, I thank the team in Cancel for what they've gone through and what they've dealt with, especially with the mental health and how it can affect them. I'd like to thank Carol Jeffs for her support as well. She's been wonderful. Um, she's there when you need her, but she's also, she allows you to push yourself to the limits as well. And that's what you need to do to achieve some challenges. And yes, like um, Councillor Wiltman, the reading has been enormous. Getting it on a Thursday and then reading it in between by having results to respond to by Monday. And that in itself has been really difficult during the time that most weekends working as a celebrant. So, you know, sometimes I'd be up at three, four o'clock in the morning still reading. Some of the um, texts early hours of the morning from Councillor Owen. When he's got something on his mind, he's got to get it out there. And you always know when the phone goes, you automatically know it's Councillor Owen. He's got something on his mind that he needs to get out for all the councillors to be well aware and informed about. So I thank you for that, Councillor Rowan. <laughs> and last but not least, I think the disappointment for me is not finishing some of the projects in the four years. And... I say sorry to my, my community because that hasn't been achieved, but it's only because there's so many other wonderful achievements that we've made during our, com our community between the nine of us councillors that there wasn't always enough time for the teams to get it done. But they will get done because they're all in process now. And last but not least, I'd like to thank my community for one, having faith in me in the beginning and believing that I could do the job and being supportive all the way through the four years and making me feel that I have made a difference to my community and I will keep making a difference to my community. Again, I thank the team for working with you all and Stay safe. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Um, all right, uh, councillors, do we have anyone else would like to, um, to, to speak at this time before we move on with the agenda? Yep. Um, 
All right, Councillor Brown was in first, and I'll go to Councillor Brown. Councillor Brown. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'll be brief. I would just like to um, thank all of my fellow councillors for the last four years for your courtesy towards me and the professional way that you've carried out your duties. I think that all of us are in it for the right reasons. I'd like to congratulate you all on the achievements that you've made in your warden, in particular the areas that you were most interested in. Um, I'd like to thank the senior officers, the CEO, and uh, the officers and the staff in general for their courtesy and their willingness to help um, the newcomer when he came into council and uh, I learned a lot from them. To um, my fellow councillor Moore, thank you Graham for your support and your friendship over the journey and also the friendship of Sue. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Ellen, my wife, who has supported me all the way and Sue and her have become good friends over the journey and I I, um, I really appreciate that, um, that friendship that was afforded to her. Um, to um, Letitia and Jody, um, when you speak and talk about your achievements, I think you should be very, very proud. I'm very impressed I, I, when I hear all of the things you've done and I wish you well in your retirement and uh, you will be missed. Um, to the other councillors who are restanding, I wish you all the very best and um, and hope that um, some of us get back here so that we can continue the work. In respect of the local um, business that we did, I guess, it was good to see the South start to catch up with sporting facilities with the rest of the Shire and for that I'm grateful. Um, there are building blocks in place now that I hope that we can expand on. Um, that. Um, a commuter bus and also get that Lang Lang bypass happening. So that's all I have to say. Thank you all for your friendship and uh, I wish you all well. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, I'm going to Councillor Brett Owen. Thanks, Mayor. I'm going to be extremely brief. I don't want to get in trouble, but I just want to thank uh, our community. Um, we've got some amazing people in our community and so thank you for their hard work and dedication for our community. Um, thank you, Letitia, for talking about Rangers Ward and you, you, you spoke very well in relation to what's happened over the last eight years. So thank you. Well, I do wish you and Jody all the very best. Thank you for your amazing contribution to our Shire. And, you know, I think you were the second and third female mayors that Cardin has ever had. I believe that's the case. So congratulations. Fantastic. You um, should be very proud. Um, just proud of Council's focus on access and inclusion, also um, improving much needed community facilities. And um, I'd like to uh, thank all councillors and staff and I've enjoyed uh, Council more under uh, Carol Jeff's leadership. I had a few issues early on in this term, um, but I think uh, Carol um, Jeff's is an amazing leader and we, we did a fantastic job in appointing her. So um, I'd like to thank my family as well. If we can't do what we do um, in our roles without our family support, so I thank them. So all the best, everyone, and particularly congratulations, Jody and Letitia. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen, and thank you to all councillors for, for speaking and sharing with us uh, at, at this time. It, again, it's been a great experience uh, working with you all, all over the last four years. Um, all right, we've still got a couple of more agenda items, so we'll just move along. Um, presentations of petitions. Uh, councillors, do I have any uh, petitions that you wish to present? Uh, there being none, we'll uh, move along to notices of motion. And we have received a notice of motion from Councillor Moore. Uh, Councillor Moore, do you want to move your notice of motion, please? Uh, thank you, Mayor. It would be a delight to do this. Um, notice of motion 1057 uh, that Council requests that the Victorian Government remove the whole or rural parts of the Cardinia Shire from metropolitan Melbourne for the purpose of the COVID-19 roadmap to reflect the diversity of Cardinia's rural and urban areas. And point two. The CEO, Carol Jeffs, be authorised to advocate the Victorian Government during caretaker period regarding the Shire's mix of urban and rural 
settings as how these apply to the COVID-19 roadmap for reopening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Moore. Can I have a second, please? Uh, Councillor Brown. I'll, I'll thank you, Councillor Moore, to speak to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Brown, for the second. Um, this notice speaks for itself, really. But I'll expand my views and reasons. It's about doing something. It beats every time doing nothing. A notice of motion is a method to reinforce the goals of local members of state parliament in our joint drive to support our local community within our rural regions of our shires. That's east, north and south in particular. For example, in Bunyip and surrounding railway townships, the residents would shop, work, seek medical attention in Druin and Warrigal, and also send their children to schools in Warrigal and Druin. And noting, of course, Geelong being classed as regional and being 77 kilometres, 77 kilometres from the CBD, and Bunyip being 83 kilometres with such a small population. It just doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. As a suggestion, maybe, the postcodes of our shire could be alternatively system to separate our rural areas from our growth corridors. It is interesting to note that the police checkpoint has been relocated to Narnagoon, where it was previously located just outside our shire's boundary at Longmorry. This has caused lots of confusion and inconvenience for our rural residents and businesses, of course. And I think we need to advocate strong, strongly here for our rural communities to ease these restrictions, and I welcome comments from my fellow councillors to discuss and talk about their own regional areas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Um, Councillor Brown, would you like to speak to this item? Yeah, thank you, Mayor, and um, thank you, Councillor Moore, for raising this very important issue. There's not much more I can add to it apart from what you've said, except for the fact that when you visit places like Katani, uh, Coralin, Bales, and they ask what's going on, that why we're in this lockdown when we've got no cases of um, COVID, um, when we're linked with Pakenham, and you're quite right with what you say about Geelong and the Bunya proximity, it just doesn't make sense. And I guess there's no easy answer. And I guess that it's, pointless us trying to come up with an answer. We'll leave that to the smart people. But I wholeheartedly endorse and support um, this motion in respect of some way getting the separation so that a more practical, realistic approach to our demographic is arrived at. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, do I have any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? Uh, Councillor Jody Owen. Hi, thanks, Mayor. Um, sadly, I can't support this motion. And trust me, I want the borders open. Um, but I also know that our Premier at the moment is steadfast in his belief. And I believe in supporting this motion that I might be giving residents the false hope that the borders will open faster for our residents in our rural areas. So as a councillor of Kadinia Shire and not just Central Ward, I'm sorry that I cannot support the motion based on it giving false hope to those who do live in our rural areas, such as Rangers Ward and in, um, in Port Ward. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Jodie Owen. Um, do I have any other councillors that would like to speak to us? Uh, councillor Colin Ross. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This has always been the most difficult thing with Cardinia Shire. We've had 8% in the urban growth boundary, which carries about 80% of our population. And on the outside, we've got 92% regional area, which is made up of green wedge farming areas in the hills area. Uh, it's been one of those um, two-edged swords. 
quite often we go for things inside the urban growth boundary as, as a growth corridor and we get involved in the, the um, growing suburbs fund and we get benefits for being a metro council. On the other hand, 92% of our shire is actually outside of the urban growth boundary. So when you get regional grants and things like that that we should be able to access, we haven't been able to get those in the past, which is really sad because we do have so much of our shire in those areas. And it's just one of those conundrums where, um, you, you know, you, you're either in the wrong place with half of it or you're in the wrong place with the other one. It's really difficult. I do appreciate councillors have shared with me. I know, I know during this COVID situation, I've watched the figures intently and there's been times when people in the hills didn't have any cases at all. I mean, there's other areas where in the south and out to the, the east where they had none at all as well. And there's other times when we've had some in the, in the central corridor. And, but we all got painted into the same, the same thing together. And I don't think there's an easy answer. I don't envy those who try and find it, but it, it, it is a real issue. And unfortunately, we're, 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 you know, we have a great side to Cardinia Shire where we do have suburbia, but we have the hills, we have the, the farming areas, you know. It's wonderful, it's diversity, but it also creates big challenges like this. So anyway, I, I think there's, that there's merit in having a conversation. I don't know where it goes. Um, there's facets to it on different levels. But anyway, um, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, do I have any other councillors that would like to speak to this item? <clears throat> um, I, I might just share a few words myself. Um, look, I support Councillor Moore's notice of motion here. Um, look, I also understand the difficulties that are involved in in the state government and the in federal government too, for that matter, trying to deal with this pandemic. It's no easy task. Uh, so. I, don't, I appreciate the effort that's gone into this. I um, What I hope to achieve um, from supporting this notice of motion is that its consideration is given as the case numbers drop and as we get to focus on the areas that are inside um, where, where it's really happening, we can exclude some of these areas on the outside, these rural areas of our council, so that those small communities within there can have a little bit of easier life for themselves in the short term. and. I know that it's not. I, I'm not. I don't know what the plan is. I can't. I can't say here's what here's what's going to work or what's not going to work. But I think I believe there is an opportunity there to meet the needs while we're still addressing this pandemic. To also meet the needs of these communities who do feel like they are very rural in their nature and they are, you know, a long way away from what would be considered metropolitan Melbourne. And we're not the only council that has this. All the interface councils have this. Um, and and we've seen it from. Morning to Peninsula, uh, Yarra Rangers, Nilambik as well. They've um, yeah, they're putting these requests forward to have some reclassification and consideration to their peripheral townships on the edges. Um, it makes sense to me, you know, that as you tighten the net, it condenses in closer. And I just encourage the state government. I hope there is a plan towards doing that so that once we do get to having six case numbers a day, it's on the other side of town, uh, Needle and Haystack. We're going to talk about six cases against five million people. I think we need to condense and focus into these areas as we progress with these numbers reducing so we can really hit it where it needs to be hit. Um, so I don't have the game plan. This notice of motion doesn't try and speak, speculate exactly where it should be or where it shouldn't be, but it asks for um, that consideration to be put in there, and I hope that the state government is already considering that um, to best meet the needs across our entire uh, communities. Um, and also, we have so much data and information at this point of time, I, I would just like to ask, what is the um, what is the modelling? What is the data that's been put into place to say that the, that the boundaries, the outer boundaries of the local government areas is the best place to put this, um, to put this boundary in place, to put this map in place? Maybe it is. I would like to see that data and the modelling that says that, but I'd also like to see what does the modelling look like if we did exclude some of these townships that were listed along those railway towns, along the Bales and the Catanis and such. Uh, and if that modelling would say we're going to address the issue of the pandemic uh, just as well, just as well as we currently are, but we're going to uh, we're going to 
help some businesses that are struggling out there, some people and communities that are struggling, then I would support that. Um, um, that's that's all I, I want to share with you, councillors. Um, before I go back to the mover, this motion. Um, do I have any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? Uh, Councillor Wilmot. Thank you, Mayor. And what a decision to finish the term of council on. Thank you, Councillor Moore, for that. Um, this is tricky. This is a really difficult one. I can see both sides of the argument here. Um, and I understand that there's a lot of our rural businesses and farmers and so forth that need that flexibility to do their trade in an eastward fashion, that those fringe communities that live um, along the railway towns, the Lang Langs that are on the borders of our, our shire do go across that border to do a lot of their business and the school kids and all the rest of it. But there's also a lot of kids that live in the rural part that go to schools in Pakenham. And there's lots of people that live in the rural towns that go to Pakenham to shop or to the doctors or whatever. So it's a very hard thing to say that one community can be in and one can't. That's why they've gone local government areas, because it's the easiest way to define an area. Um, for me, this notice of motion isn't straightforward. It's not straight. It, 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 it's an it's a open-ended thing. Um, I don't know that I can support that because it's so open-ended. If it was drawing a, a line around a certain area and saying, this is the part we want to have considered regional, I might reconsider, but it doesn't do that. It's just leaving an open slather. This bit might be in, that bit might be out. And I, I just can't support that. I need a little bit more detail to be able to support something. As much as I want to support our businesses, I think that there could also be a lot of problems. You know, you're gonna separate a shire. So then you're gonna have some that have got freedom, some that haven't. And how do you justify that to some communities that get left out. So I just, I, don't, I, I think there's more problems created through doing something like this than potentially would be um, solved. So for that reason, I'm afraid I'm, I don't think I can support it, but it's, gee, it's not an easy decision. Thanks. I thank you, Councillor Wilmot. Um, do I have any other councillors would like to speak to this item? Um, uh, they're being done. I'll, I'll go back to Councillor Moore to, um, to summarise. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, um, and thank you uh, for your comments uh, from the councillors. I really appreciate, uh, and the Mayor, particularly um, what you said there, that's backing this all up all the way. Um, I, I haven't got the answers here with this. There's no, there's no answers. We know that. We know that. But the only thing I'm guilty of, the only thing I'm guilty of is supporting our local community. That's it. No more, no less. Let's support our local community. They are asking us for some, some support. Now, if it's uh, the only thing we can do is this in our powers and with no controls, let's do it. As we approach the caretaker period due to the elections, this notice identifies the, re the requirements of our CEO and staff to continue supporting our outer regional areas of our shire in advocating to our state government for amendments to easing of restrictions, particularly in our local rural communities. That's all it is. We acknowledge, we acknowledge, of course, the health advice from state authorities, but this area has suffered in many ways with very minimal cases, so it's hard to justify. I know this isn't much we can do in this space, as it is state government's decisions. We've already acknowledged that, I get that. But I feel we need to advocate for our residents to force some form of change where possible. And I make these points, where possible. I've got the answers. But if this is all we can do, if this is the least we can do, let's do it. I urge my fellow councillors to vote positively with this notice of motion for the betterment of the Cardinia Shire residents. That's all I'm asking for. Let's, let's do it, but I, I will leave it to you, Mr Mayor. I'll leave it to my fellow councillors and I respect everybody's um, comments they've made tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Uh, we'll now put this to the vote. Um, all those in, all councillors in favour, please raise your hand. Um, all councillors against, I declare that carried.
Thank you, councillors. I'm moving along to community question time. We have received a question from Rosa Santo. Uh, I refer <laughs> to the Mm. Oh, sorry about that. that was a bit of interference. I'll, I'll return. Okay, I received a question from, from Rosa Santo. I refer the question to Carol Jess, our CEO, to read and answer. Uh, Ms. Jess, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, question from Rosa Santo. Um, have all Cardinia Shire councillors been subject to inquiry concerning activity resulting in a financial return? If not, why not? Uh, so thank you for the question, Rosa. I, uh, there are various um, internal audits and external audits which cover a whole range of um, matters relating to Council's business, but uh, with your question I assume you're referring to the item listed earlier on the agenda uh, regarding certain Council's travel expenses. This report was a result of a notice of motion of the August Council meeting that referred to only one individual councillor, not all councillors. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Carol. Uh, a written response will also be provided to Ms. Santa. Um, we also have a question from Gloria O'Connor. Uh, I again refer the question to our CEO, Carol Jeffs, to respond. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Question from Gloria O'Connor is, has sufficient information been provided for ratepayers concerning a 2% increase in the current rates charges? Uh, thank you for your question, Gloria. Yes, uh, I think sufficient information has and continues to be provided to all ratepayers regarding the rates set for this financial year and the 2% increase. This has been via a range of means, information included in Council's website, in media releases and local articles. Additionally, the proposed rates were formally on public exhibition via the budget process, including submissions, and information about the range of supports available to ratepayers has also been provided. Um, further information is covered regularly in advertisements and on Council's website. I just would like to also point out that um, the Council's support for Community for COVID-19 initiatives uh, is at least 2% and will no doubt be more as the financial year proceeds. Any resident with queries regarding their rates is encouraged to contact Council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Carol. A written response will also be provided to Ms. O'Connor. Uh, and that's it for community question time. Um, so as this is our final meeting before next month's election, um, I wish to take the opportunity to thank my fellow councillors for their assistance during uh, my term as mayor. Um, and again, we've went through all the thank yous before, so I won't go into it as depth. Um, it has certainly been a difficult year, not um, not what we expected at all. I heard a lot of first time things from some other mayors there. Well, I guess I was the first mayor to hold an online council meeting, so I'll put that one in the um, in the bat. And I'll be pretty happy when we can put these aside and go back to meeting in person again. It's a real shame. It is a real shame that we haven't been able to conduct this last meeting or have a meeting together in person. Um, you know, it seems like a long time since we've since we've done that. So, um, look I, for those councillors um, who are contesting the election again. I wish you all the best of luck. Um, and for those two councillors, for Councillor Jody Owen and Councillor Tisha Wilmot, who are not contesting again, um, thank you for your service to this community over your last two terms. It has been, um, yeah. You've done a great job along along those lines of, you know, everything that you've listed of getting over the, you know, for the community, and I'm sure the community is thankful for your contributions over that time. So, um, really wish you all the best of luck, and I look forward to you sending some community question time to some council meetings in the future, and and, uh, and hold us to account, or whoever will be the new the, the new council in the future. Uh, Again, thank you, everyone. It's been a wonderful term. I'm, I will see everyone, you know, I'll talk to everyone, but we will have conversations over the next few weeks. So uh, we enter the caretaker period tomorrow. Look, I wish you all the best. Um, and yeah, that conducts, uh, concludes tonight's meeting. So thank you all for your attendance. And I declare the meeting close. Thank you. Enjoy the break, Enjoy the break Mr. Mayor. Enjoy the break. Thanks for your sleep.